Good afternoon. I'll call this meeting to order at uh, 4 p.m. Was I ready? <laughs> we'll do an adoption of the agenda that West Elgin Council hereby adopts a regular council agenda for April 11th, 2024, as presented. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councilor Novakis, Councilor Statham, all in favor? That is so carried. Uh, disclosure of any pecuniary interest, if not now at the time. Looking in the room, not seeing any. We'll move into our public meeting. Can I have the recommendation, please? That West Elgin Council hereby proceed into a public meeting pursuant to the Drainage Act. Can I have a mover and a seconder to do that? Councillor Denning, Councillor Statham, all in favor? That's so carried. 4.1, consideration of engineer's report, Sherman Drain. Mr. Widner, you have the floor. Oh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Today we have the Sherman drain. Um, this is a relatively small drain. It's a drain enclosure. It's all assessed to one person. Um, the Sherman drain was done in the past, about 1983. It was done by Tajam. Um, we're just looking to enclose a small portion of ditch on Samaterra Inc., which I believe is owned by Sackers, who are also a, a large portion of the watershed. Um, they recently did a drain enclosure just down the road, the Crow Drain. They are now looking at this one. So today we have a very small drain, it's about 286 meters. It's 24, 21 inch tile. It's entirely assessed to that landowner. Um, the only other, the other landowners are included um, as there is a new maintenance schedule, but all costs are being assessed to the one landowner. That's approximately $70,000. Um, Tom's reached out to them and dealt with them a couple of times and uh, they are anxious to get this built as this farm is currently in wheat and they would like it done in August. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions or comments around the floor? Not seeing any. Any questions from the public? Not seeing any. Go ahead, the recommendation please, Mayor Kirk. Uh, just before I read the recommendation, I would like to add to the recommendation to schedule the quarter revision. Um, so it'll be on Thursday, May 9th, 2024 at 3.45 p.m. So the recommendation is that Council of Municipality of West Elgin hereby receives the engineer's report as prepared and presented by Mr. B. Widner, professional engineer, and that Council authorizes staff to initiate the tender process in accordance with the Drainage Act, if required, for the reconstruction of the municipal drain known, known as the Sherman Drain, to be considered by council following the quarter rev revision and that the quarter revision be scheduled for Thursday, May 9th, 2024 at 3.45 p.m. and that council consider the provisional bylaw 2024-28 as presented in the bylaw portion of the agenda for the first and second reading. Thank you for that. A mover, please. Councillor Vakas, a seconder. Councillor Statham, all in favor? That is so carry. So 4.2, sorry, adjournment of public meeting. That the Council of the Municipality of West Elgin hereby adjourn the public meeting pursuant to the Drainage Act. I'm moving a seconder for that. Councilor Statham, Councilor Denning, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you for that, Ms. Wedner. Have a good day. Uh, number five, adoption of the minutes. That West Elgin Council hereby adopt the minutes of March 28th, 2024 as presented. I have a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Denning, Councillor Statham, all in favor? That is so moved. Thank you for that. 5.1 committee and boards. That West Elgin Council acknowledge, acknowledge receipt of the Recreation Committee minutes January 17th, 2024. The Rodney Aldborough Agricultural Society Directors Meeting minutes March 26th, 2024. And the Economic Development Committee minutes Mar uh, February 13th, 2024. And the Arena Board minutes February 14th, 2024, as presented. Any questions about those minutes? Uh, seeing any mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Vakas, Councillor Statham, all in favor? That is carried. Uh, number six, the business arising from the minutes. Not seeing any. Number seven, we'll go with staff reports, 7.1, so the building report. Anyone have any questions they want to, or they've already asked ahead of time, looks like? Not seeing any, we'll go with the uh, recommendation, please. 
The West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Corey Pemberton, CBO, regarding the Building Department Summary Report for the month of March 2024. Mover and a seconder. Councillor Denning, Councillor Statham. All in favor? That is carried. 7.2, uh, the fire report, the monthly fire report. Uh, Chief MacArthur's here. Any questions for the report? Anything you want to highlight, Chief? Uh, no. Uh, thank you, Council. And Your Honor, just a quick note to thank the firefighters for their staffing on April 8th. So we uh, it, was, it was thankfully a quiet day across the county for emergency services, but we had uh, uh, two or three uh, trucks staffed if necessary. So anyways, just a, a thanks to their uh, to them being available that day. Yeah, everything went so smoothly. So thanks to all the staff and your fire department and everybody that made that day go so smoothly and the people that attended as well that made the day go smoothly from our area and from all around that came to see us. I met families from Wallaceburg and England and I did not know eclipse chasing was a thing. <laughs> Something I learned. Anybody have any questions? No? Okay, we'll go ahead the recommendation then, please. That West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Jeff MacArthur, Fire Chief, regarding the March 2024 fire report for information purposes. A mover and a seconder. Councillor Statham, Councillor Vakas, all in favor? That's carry. 7.3 is our operations and community services. The 7.3.1, the monthly operations report. Anybody have any questions on that for Mr. Gosnell? Okay, we'll have the recommendation, please. That West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Lee Gosnell, Manager of Operations and Community Services for, the, for information purposes. A mover and a seconder. Councillor Novakis, seconded by Councillor Denning. All in favor? That is carried. 7.4 is the clerk. 7.4.1 is the community grant applications. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this uh, this report is brought back um, to Council again at the last Council meeting. It was uh, presented um, and Council had indicated their desire to see a recommended amount from staff. So some further um, further documentation was added to the report, which outlined a criteria, the description, and then also how it aligns uh, with a scoring sheet. So all that uh, the, all those details were presented to council, and in the column there was a staff recommendation. So I'll open this to the floor uh, for council to discuss uh, what they are comfortable with. It all remains in line with that total amount that we were going to be putting available. Thank you for that. Councilor Vacas, you have the floor. Through the chair, I just had a couple of questions about some of these things. Lawn bowling, um, they receive money every year, but we also have $1,000 for lawn bowling in our budget. I'm just wondering, is it two different spaces? So we already, on top of what they're asking, technically speaking, give lawn bowling $1,000 a year. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, through the chair. So um, the Lawn Pooling Association comes with a request for a donation, but the Lawn Bowling facility is a municipal facility. Mm -hmm. So there are costs associated with operating that. And then the Lawn Bowling Association puts a lot of time and effort into maintaining that facility so that we don't have to. So that's where the donation comes in. Okay. I just want a clarification on that one. Um, and then... I guess it's for the rest of the council. I really appreciated the scoring part that was done, but for some of them, I had a small disagreement about where I would personally rank them. So I, and I think Councillor Denning before had said, perhaps we should look at organizations that haven't been granted in previous years first. Um, so I was wondering if we would be willing to look at it. For example, Quad County receiving only 54%, but as someone who has worked and many members of our community have worked with Quad County, it is offering a service to our youth who have disabilities and to our businesses because they provide employment. So at 54%, I'm just wondering if we could look at that. Um, 
also for me, when we were looking at the kind of recreation in part, um, while we certainly could not give the whole amount to the Legion, I would argue that they are offering a great service and to a number of our members in the community. So I just, those were two that I was looking at. Um, the hospital, I, I, it's a hard one for me because I know they need money, but they also have a tremendous um, organization behind them that can fundraise. I'm wondering if some of the other organizations in there are more valuable, but these were just my questions when I was looking at it. Any other discussion that anyone want to come on that, Magda? And so through the chair, um, so the scoring sheet was developed uh, for the first time based on council strategic um, uh, plan. Um, we still have to align the application, grant application to council strategic plan. So it's kind of one and the other is not in sync yet and in, not in alignment. And the percentage the percentage only represents whether they align with the council strategic uh, goals. That, uh, that doesn't give um, the amount of what they should be getting. Um, so, and this is just staff recommendation. By all means, if uh, a council feels um, uh, that, you know, disagrees with any of the items that staff recommends, by all means, we can certainly um, adjust that. More discussion on this? Councilor Denning? Thank you, and uh, through the chair, and thank you to staff for all the work uh, that has been put into this. Uh, this is a very difficult thing to, to find a uh, balance in doing, of course, because these are all very worthy. Uh, my only observation here is that some of the organizations um, are, uh, the this, this matrix provides them with the full ask, perhaps, um, in an effort to be as fair as possible, uh, we would take we would scale back on some of these um, donations from providing the full amount requested to a reduced amount and then applying that to one of the other organizations. For instance, the West Lorne Optimus Road Race, uh, they, they've asked for twenty five hundred. And um, again, this is this is our, our beginning palette. Um, it's the recommendation is for that full ask. Now, there's many other organizations that have asked for a certain amount, but we haven't been able to apply the full amount. So perhaps if we were to take a little bit back from the organizations, instead of giving each of those three or four the full amount, scale back $500 on each of those and, and reapply it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. So in the past, we would decide how much of the ask we were giving. And personally, I liked that because... As you're saying, Councillor Denning, we cannot give the full amount to everybody, but it just, you know, some people may have bigger projects for that year. Others, as Councillor Vaxa said, may have more backing. Um, our legions are slowly dying in our communities, and it offers recreation, socialization that we so need after what we've been through for three and a half years. I just think that's a big one, too. So, and all the other ones are as well, but... You can't always give to everybody the same every all the time and every year. Councilor Vacas. Through the chair. And I think also my thinking was is looking at funding that would maybe prevent activities or programming from happening. And just in comparison, looking at the Elgin International Club, who is looking to exterior paint their club property. While I appreciate that would beautify it, if they don't paint, it doesn't mean that they can't run their programming. Um, Quad County, um, if they don't receive $3,500, may not be able to run the programming. Same with the West Elgin Community Health Center. Um, I, I would say, from what I understand, the roof replacement at the Legion is something that is going to become problematic that may prevent. I was just trying to look at how can we have the greatest impact. And for those organizations that need the money to kind of continue. So I myself had kind of gotten rid of the four county health service foundation. 
I realize that many members in our community use the hospital, but if we look at our donation over the past five years, it has been almost $60,000. So for this year, my thought was, let's not. Um, I think that contributing towards the Elgin International Club painting is something that we could maybe look at, but I was definitely looking at things like the Community Health Center Senior Spring Fling, Quad County Support, the Legion Roof, the Kiwanis Club of Rodney um, and trying to figure out how to get to $20,000 that way. That's just my thoughts on that. Councilor Statham, do you have anything that you want to add? Through the chair, I think I, I second Bill's opinion. Um, when I was looking through this, I did notice a number of them that are, um, we've sort of provided the full uh, the full requested amount for. And I think if we scale that back a little bit, I think we can uh, put a little bit more funding in place for some of the other um, asks that maybe got, uh, you know, 25% or 15% of what they, what they requested. So that's, that's kind of what, how I feel about it. Thank you. So I'm already getting calls. I don't know if staff is about some of these. Yeah, they are. Okay. Um, Cause they, you know, we're in April and they applied in December. Um, what they can do or can't do and is this has this been applied yet how much any at all what's going on so I would like to leave today with an answer if we have for any of these people any of these organizations so what would you like to put together are we going to go through line by line did you want to go with recommendations what's your pleasure Mr. Denning <clears throat> So, um, in an effort, and I agree, if we can put this to bed today, that would be great to try to make it simple. Uh, I uh, agree with Councillor Navakis's thoughts about Four Counties Hospital. There's $2,500 there and $2,500 plus uh, scaling back $500 from the um, donations that um, we've applied full request. That'd be one, two, three. Three, three. That's another um, fifteen hundred dollars, right? So that's four thousand dollars. Reapply that four thousand um, dollars. That's a place to start if anybody wants to take the baton from there. Councilor Statham. Um, one of the one of the ones that I think that maybe we should uh, apply a little bit more funding to is a summer youth transition program. Um, so the ask there was thirty five hundred. We uh, had a thousand dollars recommended for that. So that was one of the ones that I thought maybe we might be able to increase slightly. What are you thinking? What amount are you thinking? Anyone? I. I mean, it, it, we they asked for thirty five hundred. We provided a thousand. So if we added um, even another, uh, you know, seven fifty or a thousand to that uh, to bring it in line with fifty percent of their ask. Okay. What's your pleasure on that, Council? You want to do the another thousand or seven hundred fifty? So two thousand to the summer youth total. Councilor Denning? Uh, so that leaves 3,000 to uh, play with. Um, I know that um, Eagle Community Center was not one of the fortunate recipients of donations from the Rodney Cemetery money. Many of these other organizations were. Um, so I would feel that uh, bumping up their request, um, they had asked for 2,000. We've uh, set aside 500, maybe another 500 to 1,000. That leaves us with $2,000 to redistribute. Councilor Stephen, Councilor Navakis, what are your thoughts on that? I, I would agree with that. Okay. All right, I'm doing some math. <laughs> Sorry, Councilor Denning, that last one. Um, so we had 3,000 left. 500 was the recommended amount. You want to take out another 1,000 or just another 500? Sorry, 
another 500. So we've got 2,500 less. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Dunning? Again, quad counties. Um, do a tremendous amount of great work. Uh, they had asked for 3,500. And we had deer marked 1,000. Another 500 on that one. We, so, so, sorry, we, sorry, we had added a thousand to that. So they're at two thousand. So they're at two thousand. Okay. At moment, yeah. Pardon me. Thank you. That's uh, Another one that um, sort of I I kind of looked at was the West Elgin Community Health Center, the Senior Spring Fling. They had asked for fifty three hundred. We have five hundred allocated there. I think that we can maybe do a little bit better on that one. Again, that's that's ten percent of their ask. So if we could uh, increase that, I would say another five hundred there. My view would be appropriate. Any thoughts from Councillor Navakas, Councillor Denning on that? That's fine. Councillor Denning. So um, one of the biggest spreads here um, would be the request from the Legion. The roof, they've asked for $46,000. Uh, and we've put 1000 which glad to be able to help, but perhaps we can up that one a little bit as well. Yeah, that's the one I was going to comment on to see if anybody had thoughts about the Legion roof. Councilor Vacas, Councilor Statham, any thoughts on that? Yep. Through the chair, I I agree. I, I would certainly up that as well. If if the cost of the new roof is forty six thousand, um, I'm just I'm just a l slightly hesitant on where the rest of that funding would come from. Forty six thousand is a lot, and if we're it looks like twenty twenty two, twenty twenty one, we've you know provided three thousand dollars. It would be nice to sort of see where that money is going if we're actually getting anywhere with it. I, you know. It's just a thought, but um, you know, I'm certainly comfortable replacing it. There is a huge difference between you know, 1,000 and 46,000. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we certainly can't, we also can't give them 46,000. So, <clears throat> but I think that the Legion to Michelle's point earlier, uh, I think that the Legion is, you know, certainly a provide a ton of community services, you know? So I agree with that. I would just like to know that it's going somewhere, I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We're making gain. Councilor Denny? Through the chair, I can speak to that a little bit. I know that the West Dog and Legion has had a fundraising campaign in place for over a year now uh, with regards to raising the funds for this. And um, I, uh, I know that there was contributions from that cemetery fund that I spoke of and that uh, they have been working towards um, closing this gap. Now, the only question I can't provide is, is the 46000 um, the entire cost of the roof? Yes, <clears throat> that was the entire cost of the Thank roof. Thank you. Where so, you at now? So when, like you said, we are doing fundraising. The metal is corroded. Really corroded. There's so much. What's left to raise? Um, Uh, what was the uh, remaining balance? Two thousand. So, if what if we applied the remaining two thousand to the legion? I think we've we've addressed a lot of the other ones with a big gap. If we applied the re remaining amount to the legion, I, I think I would be happy with that. Okay, Councillor Vacas. Through the chair, I would just like to because I was cognizant of this before, but for example, the Westlawn Optimist did ask for a total in kind of eight hundred and twenty nine. So, if we look at also, the amount we have set aside at 2000 they're still receiving more. And it would be the same with the West Lauren um, Horticultural Society that we have given them 500 in total in kind and also 1000 I'm just wondering if we are looking at them in total donations. And both of those organizations, while wonderful, do also have opportunities of fundraising. I just want to make sure we're aware that we have in kind, which does come out of the budget, a couple of these organizations twice. Any thoughts on that? 
Councilor Dunning? That accurate observation notwithstanding, I'm, I'm okay with Councilor um, Statham's suggestion of putting the balance on the Legion. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so let's bring us to using all of our council grants. Do you have any other questions or any other comments to add to that before we go ahead? Okay, we'll go ahead with the clerk's recommendation. Uh, just before the recommendation, I would like to just go over them line by line, yeah. and I will read out what the recommended amount is just to make sure that we are all clear and on the same page. So the first was the Dutton Dunwich West Elgin Community Fund, which was an in-kind donation of approximately $200. Eagle Community Centre, uh, we are going with $1,000. Elgin International Club, $1,000. Four Counties Health Services Foundation is zero. Kiwanis Club of Rodney, 500. Claude County Support Services, 2,000. Royal Canadian Legion Branch, 221, 3,000. Tiny Tots was in kind of $1,134. West Elgin Community Health Center for the Senior Spring Fling was 1000 The fitness program in kind of 260 The stroller walk and lunch in kind of 100 The vaccination clinic in kind of 450 The Horticultural Society purchase of the plants and maintenance of the village plants, uh, 1000 the Horticultural Society annual uh, plant and bake sale in kind 478. The Lawn Bowling Club 2000. The Optimus in kind for miscellaneous events 829. And the West Lauren Optimus Road Race 2000. All good. Is that any discrepancies at all? I don't see any. Okay. Okay. So the recommendation is that West Elgin Council hereby receives the community grant application report from Terry Tostra Clerk and that West Elgin Council hereby approve the grant application amounts as amended to be included in the 2024 budget. Mover, please. Councillor Denning, seconder, Councillor Statham. All in favor? That is carried. 7.5, Finance Administration, 7.5.1, the operating budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in front of you on the screen, uh, it's a summary, quick summary of um, municipal 2024 operating budget. Next slide, please. So this is uh, just the proposed um, timeline. Um, it can change, we can move dates as, as we go um, based on um, council's comfort level. So today we will be going through uh, operating budget in great detail on April 25th. We'll probably uh, discuss that again. Um, we'll bring uh, to council attention all the changes made if required. And um, we're proposing on adopting the budget on May 9th. Uh, if council is ready. So that's the proposed timeline. Next slide, please. Uh, the objectives of this year's budget are number one, complete pay equity review uh, by June 2024. Uh, pay equity started in December. We had to uh, put it on hold due to um, organizational review. Uh, we had to wait until organizational review recommendations are approved by council. That was done in January. Since that time, uh, the uh, uh, pay equity review has commenced. Um, probably within another uh, four weeks, we'll probably council will see the results. Another objective is uh, implement year one recommendations um, of organizational review. 
uh, work towards development charges background study, uh, completion in 2025, decide on all town hall future. Next slide, please. Improve West Elgin's infrastructure to support long-term growth. Stormwater management initiative initiatives are uh, one of the uh, primary objectives. Initiate master recreation plan and complete asset management implementation and meet regulatory requirements by the end of this year. Next slide, please. So this is just a reminder uh, for our asset management under Ontario Regulation 588.17. Uh, it requires municipalities to develop an asset management plan in three stages. And there are requirements. So phase one had to be completed by July 1st, 2022. Phase two by July 1st of 2024. And there's phase three in 2025. Um, at this point, do um, um, you know um, staff shortages, and we were even unable to um, meet July first phase one requirement. So our goal is to get that done by July first of twenty twenty four, and then complete the entire um, requirements for twenty twenty four by the end of the year. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 2024 budget summary. So this year's budget proposes 5.76% levy increase. Council can choose to accept this proposal and vote to approve capital and operating budget as presented, resulting in an increase in municipal portion of the property tax rate of 7.3%, which raises 4.2%. Uh, $2 million in total property taxes. This would be an annual increase of about $92.10 per year or $7.68 per month for a residential home valued at $200,000. For 2024, 1% 1 property tax increase represents approximately $31,000. So as you can see, we can't raise a lot of money with uh, proposed uh, increases. Um, next slide, please. So this is a breakdown of uh, where um, our ratepayers tax dollars are, are going to. So we only, of the total tax bill, 44% goes to our municipality. 43% goes to the county and 13% goes to um, education, to uh, school boards. Next slide, please. This uh, graph shows you um, 2024 budget increases across Elgin County. So Elgin County uh, passed budget at 3.79%. Our West Elgin is proposing 7.3%. Dutton Dunwich 9.7, Southwall 2.29, uh, Town of Almer 4.5%, Central Elgin 0, Municipality of BAM 10.3, and Township of Malahide 6.38. Average um, uh, increase is around 5.5%. Um, next slide, please. Revenues, uh, we're budgeting 16.5 million in revenues. Um, of that amount, 29% uh, comes from municipal taxation, 21% from municipal grants, 16% from reserve draws, 12% um, from miscellaneous revenue, 7% from fees, rents, permits, and other revenue, and 15% from uh, utilities, water, and sewage. Next slide, please. Expenses, again, 16.5 million. So less than 1% goes to conservation authority. 5% pertains to landfill. Um, Just a moment. 
let's see, can you help? 1% um, goes to planning and building. Approximately 1% pertains to council. 9% um, to uh, general government administration and MTO. 13% pertains to fire, police, bylaw, and bylaw enforcement. 11% pertains to parks and recreations and cemetery. Um, libraries is just point, almost 0.3%. And 25% to um, pertains to water and sewage, our utilities departments, and 34%, uh, the biggest um, uh, share are, uh, pertains to infrastructure, roads, drains, and transit. Next slide, please. Um, noticeable uh, budget shift. So we're budgeting another $10,000, additional $10,000 for integrity commissioner. Um, wages are up $121,000. Policing has increased by $36,000. Insurance, $40,000 increase. Fire uh, without uh, wages and insurance, um, net of that, $24,000 and uh, for roads department, gravel and dust control, $45,000 and $70,000. So those are um, significant increases that we, that municipality is absorbing this year, total of $347,000. Is it okay to jump in now or ask a question? Absolutely. So most of those we cannot control, except for the first one. So how do we control that one? What do we do? What happens? Why, like, or is any of that founded? Sorry. Uh, the integrity commissioner? So integrity commissioner. So this was, um, that account was um, implemented um, last year. This was, um, there was a change. Uh, so basically each municipality is responsible for um, their own integrity commissioner uh, complaints. So basically if the public has an issue with uh, the way um, um, with the council, yes. they have a right to complain yes. to um, or send an email to um, integrity commissioner. So basically um, those emails, those phone calls are never ignored. However, uh, we're paying um, $650 an hour uh, to uh, integrity commissioner who is mm -hmm. reviewing these issues and investigating if needed to be. And, you know, with that, the bill without, um, you know, our knowledge comes to the municipality, which yes. we have to okay. pay. Okay. Haven't seen us in the news, so we're good. <laughs> uh, no, and, and basically that number is based on last year we um, we put five thousand dollars in the budget. I believe um, in twenty twenty three we finished the year with eleven thousand dollars. So I think fifteen thousand dollars for twenty twenty four is appropriate based on previous years. Each matters. So what taxpayers could know is that it's easier and less expensive on their tax base if they come and work things out with staff and council before Absolutely. coming to something that might be unfounded. Or, I mean, they have that right. That's fine. But we're here to talk and we're here to listen. So, okay. That sounds great. Thank you for uh, helping me understand that. Councilor Denning. Thank you. Through the chair. Uh, one of the previous slides showed um, a pie chart with um, costs uh, associated with expenses. And one of the things that really stood out to me was that 5% um, to the landfill. Obviously, it's very expensive to operate a landfill. Has staff ever looked into um, like uh, the, the alternative to operating our own landfill, having an exchange? Um, and uh, would there be any cost savings in, in contracting that out? Uh, Councillor Denning, um, so the cost for landfill um, 
uh, landfill cost captures a garbage and recycling pickup. So um, the cost of operating landfill, if you just grab the portion for the landfill operation is not as high as the service that we offer to our uh, residents. Any other questions? So roads, that's good. Okay. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So additional initiatives that are also affecting our budget are so back in January or February, uh, we had a delegation to council um, by Mr. Schneider. Um, he suggested um community awards. I, I thought it would be, uh, this year would be perfect opportunity to include that and have uh, some kind of um, appreciation night for um, our community members, volunteers, and volunteer firefighters. So that's the uh, additional uh, $15,000 you will see under uh, council's budget. Pay equity review um, based, so uh, our consulting firms firm is uh, comparing wages with uh, 10 different um, comparators, uh, most of them mainly municipalities, the same size. Um, looking at the, uh, uh, the information that was previewed to me, our wages are extremely low. So I am uh, putting additional $100,000 to cover, um, you know, the adjustment that um, we would need to put uh, for 2024 in wages. Asset management, we are, um, the $77,000 uh, covers uh, the cost of uh, two part-time students, mostly, um, they'll be responsible for um, uh, GIS and uh, helping us with implementation of um, asset management. So one position is student position, um, temporary summer, and the other position is uh, permanent part-time. It's the shared position that council approved uh, with Southwold and Dutton Dunwich. Uh, development uh, charges, background study, council already approved that, $30,600. Um, community risk assessment. So in 2019, Ontario introduced new regulations under Fire Prevention and Protection Act, which requires a community risk assessment. And uh, every municipality and every fire department in Ontario is uh, required to complete a review, a community risk assessment uh, as provided by uh, this regulation and use its community risk assessment to inform decisions about the provision of fire protection services. So um, we can't defer that any longer. And uh, flooding incentive, I am also adding added $100,000 since over the last two years, we've been um, experiencing um, extreme uh, weather conditions, flooding especially. Um, so um, unfortunately, uh, to upgrade our uh, storm system is not it's not very uh, simple process. It requires um, finances, uh, it, it requires a um, um, great amount of money, which our municipality doesn't have. However, for the time being, uh, we um, staff did some research and we would like to propose um, to uh, come up with some kind of a program for our residents, similar to uh, Township of Tavistock, uh, administered 10 years ago. Uh, so basically that $100,000 would provide engineering services uh, to landowners wishing to implement flood prevention measures. Um, as you know, in our municipality, each property may have uh, unique circumstances. 
And those issues need to be, you know, assessed individually. So that $100,000 would kind of um, provide us with an engineer that could go uh, door to door um, to affected residents and kind of assess their issue, make sure that they're not directly connected to our um, municipal drain and basically uh, um, help them with the backflow um, protection if needed and, and answer any inquiries they may have. Um, another item on our list and for this year is recreation master plan. Um, last year, we um, tried to um, implement it. However, the cost was uh, unaffordable to our municipality. So last year we put $40,000 into reserves. Uh, this year, if we allocate another $40,000, we will be able to complete that plan with council's permission and approval. Okay, does anybody have any questions on this slide? Councilor Bacchus? Through the chair, for the flooding incentive, would priority be given to those community members who live in areas most affected? Yes. Okay. Yes. For flooding incentive, I'm question that just includes advice, not a backflow or how to get the backflow? We would have to. So basically, um, right now we're allocating $100,000. We don't know how much hundred thousand dollars going to give us. Um, we would have to develop a plan, and and, and perhaps um, find out from the community how many um, community members are interested in this program, and and then you know if there is any ma uh, money left over, come up with some kind of incentives. Um, okay. You know, associated with that. Any other questions about this slide? No. Oh, Councilor Denning, sorry. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, so with regards to the flooding incentive, uh, we put set the money aside and council would have a, an opportunity to look at what that proposal would be before approving it? Absolutely. We would come up with the program. Um, uh, we'll present it to council and then based on council's approval, uh, we would uh, implement it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, next slide, please. And now we're going to um, budget summary. Next slide. So this is uh, the front page of the budget in the agenda package. Uh, taxation uh, is at two point, uh, sorry, four point two million dollars. Local improvements. So if the fifty nine. $1,000 represents um, the cost of debentures that are on the very last page of the budget. So it's in and out. We collect that money through taxation, but it's on, uh, at the same time, the payment comes out of municipality. And um, and miscellaneous revenue um, fluctuates. Um, and the reason why there's um, um, such a fluctuation is the interest. Um, last year, uh, we were very lucky. Uh, we kept uh, the money in our um, savings account and we received close to 4% interest, um, over $200,000. I'm not sure if it's going to be as lucrative uh, this year as, you know, there's a uh, there's gonna be a, not sure what this year is gonna bring. Um, as for the grants, um, again, we are receiving OMPF funding, one point eight million dollars. OCIF funding is slightly lower than a uh, year before. And the usual grants that we apply every year is Canada Day and um, Summer Student Program. Uh, those numbers uh, fluctuate um, significantly. Canada Day, we usually get $5,000. However, Summer Student Grant, that number fluctuates. 
but it's around uh, usually uh, $5,000. Um, and then here you see transfer to reserves. That amount is our OCIF funding that goes straight to reserves. Um, this year would be the last year where we're using um, OCIF funding for a Rodney refurbishment project. And then um, we're going to have to kind of um, allocate that money towards um, another capital project. And then uh, transfer from reserves. My file, I apologize. So um, transfer from reserves is, so what, what we're proposing, um, pay equity review, $100,000 that uh, we're preparing for, as well as um, uh, flooding incentive. I am proposing to move that money out of reserve from uh, tax rate stabilization reserves. So it doesn't uh, affect uh, our residents directly and kind of uh, keeps our tax increases uh, stable. As well, um, there's also um, unused money that I will be, once we go through operating uh, budget, I will be going line by line and um, letting council know, you know, which uh, reserve is, which reserve account is being affected. I think that would be easier if we uh, put that at the, uh, during our uh, operating budget. And then uh, next slide, please. Operating reserve. So this is um, net um, amount out of each department um, uh, summarizes uh, the entire uh, 2024 budget. Um, we're gonna go through that in great detail. So uh, council understands um, uh, what we're propos proposing for this year. Next slide, please. And this slide shows um, uh, the summary of our reserve uh, funds that we currently have. And we might have to flip back and forth uh, during our op uh, operating budget discussion. So uh, council can kind of refer to them at that time. Um, next slide, please. So there is a continuation of reserve schedule. Next slide, please. And this one is, um, there is one account under reserves. It's called um, Deferred Capital 2021-2024. This is a detail what's sitting in that capital as, uh, you know, those are the uncompleted projects um, that we had to defer between 2021 and 2023. And that concludes my uh, budget summary. And uh, if council, uh, does anybody have any questions first? The floor is yours. Anybody have any questions for that? Okay, so we're gonna move into uh, operating budget. Yes, please. Okay, so on your first page, uh, we're gonna begin with uh, miscellaneous revenue.
Ready? Is everybody ready? Okay, thank you. So um, miscellaneous revenue tax certificates. Last year, um, we issued 133 tax certificates. Uh, we um, council approved uh, uh, additional, I, I believe we uh, increased um, uh, the cost of tax certificates. So um, that $9,300 is based on new um, revenue. Um, I believe we're charging $70 per tax certificate. Um, 911 signs, uh, not a lot, $500. So this is uh, basically we're covering the cost of um, con uh, constructing and installing um, 911 signs. Uh, boreal permits, uh, we're um, projecting $9,000. Um, we increased uh, burial permits, as council recalls, um, from we increased the cost from ten dollars to twenty. So that should generate double of the revenue we had last year. Marriage licenses, um, that's always unpredictable, but uh, we're budgeting roughly twenty four hundred twenty four hundred dollars. Last year we had sixteen uh, marriage license issued. Um, parking tickets, um, this is uh, the revenue we get from Elgin County. As you can see, there is nothing. That revenue usually comes very late in the year. Uh, this will be an accrual done for 2023, but we'll kind of estimate around $5,000. Um, Yacht Club, this is the uh, $2,500, that, um, is that which is based on the agreement with the Yacht Club for sewage. Um, and then miscellaneous expense and SF checks of around $1,500. Um, interest, uh, as you can see, in, tw in two 2023, $403,000 in interest we earned. Um, this year, don't know uh, what to predict. Uh, in 2022, uh, we earned 118. So as you can see, it fluctuates. I'm hoping for $200,000. Uh, tax uh, and penalty. So this is the uh, interest charged on uh, current and previous uh, tax bills, previous year's tax bills, 40,000 for each account. Um, $1,200 is, um, is the, um, um, we have an agreement with Juice Connect. They are storing uh, their internet equipment on our water towers. Uh, they're paying us um, uh, $1,200 per year uh, for that rental. Administration fees are the fees that we charge to Tri-County. Um, uh, arena board, uh, and it's, it's an allocation to Arena Department, Tri-County, and tra Trailer Park. Um, Reprint of tax water bills, a very small revenue. Uh, we don't do a lot of them. Rebates, we're only uh, budgeting $500 this year. And then now moving on to uh, grants, OMPF funding, we're getting $2,000 more this year uh, than from previous year. On the other hand, OCA, OCIF funding is significantly lower, down to 311 from 366. And then Canada Day and summer student grants were budgeting $5,000 each. Um, that um, municipal modernization um, grant, as you can see, this is a, a positive number. This is uh, the project that was uh, not completed. That's why it uh, shows us positive number. And then on the bottom, transfer to reserves. Um, again, OCIF funding goes directly to reserves. And transfer from reserves is the um, pay equity review, $100,000. Um, and um, so what I am proposing uh, to cover the cost, because we're um, 
proposing so many different initiatives. There is um, money left over from Ontario Invest Grant. There is approximately $72,000 left. Um, that money, when we received, we received approximately close to a half a million dollars. Uh, with that money, we uh, purchased our electronic signs and there was other initiatives that uh, we we have, we've been able to complete. So there is a, approximately $72,000 left. What I'm proposing with, you know, our tough budget uh, this year and um, inflation extremely high, I'm proposing to use that money towards um, this year's initiatives. There is uh, approximately, there is $72,000 left in that account. And um, yeah. so that, that concludes uh, miscellaneous revenue. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, we're going to move on to council. So as I mentioned to you, wages are a um, little bit higher based on a 3.3% um, increase that council approved. Um, under, so wages and then payroll benefits, that's self-explanatory. Uh, we're budgeting $20,000 for council conferences, seminars, and meetings, $1,000 for mileage, another $1,000 for meals, and um, $15,000 for um, um, the account is called recognition award, but that money is uh, put in the budget to uh, for the volunteer awards for the firefighters and community volunteers. Um, and um, as I mentioned to you, Integrity Commissioner, another $15,000 based on 2023 actual of uh, 10276 And then other supplies, um, miscellaneous um, supplies that we uh, purchase for, um, for our office staff in the council chambers. So I'm budgeting $5,000. Uh, so the total for um, total budgeted amount for council is at $136,234.06. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, Councilor Vacas? Through the chair, I, I am just questioning the $15,000 for the recognition awards. I am wondering if it is for firefighters and volunteers, if we are going to remove the $2,000 that we have under the fire department for volunteer awards. Um, I'm also wondering if this could be something another committee could take on and we could even lower it to 10,000 and find other ways to be coming up with this money. Thoughts? Certainly uh, an event like this that brings uh, the community together um, would be something I'm sure that some of our uh, our corporate citizens might be interested in sponsoring. So perhaps there's an opportunity for us to use our database to reach out to some of the local businesses and see if these this particular event is something that uh, they'd like to contribute towards to offset those costs. Councillor Bacchus. Through the chair, we also have $10,000 for employee recognition through the municipality. I'm wondering if we can maybe come up with one total and do them all at the same time, but cut it back. Yep. Um, through the chair, so employee recognition is kind of um, 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 something that we want to do for our own employees and not have, um, you know, uh, community members or public involved in it. That's why it's kind of kept separately. So that would be like a lunch or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we could still combine the 2000 and the 15 and come up with a number. 
investments under the fireman's budget? We can certainly um, decrease the fifteen thousand dollars down to ten. It is hard it, hard to estimate. Like this is this is like the event that we've never done. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure of the size of the event and um, the cost associated with it. But I thought, you know, we certainly have to put a limit on it. But if, in council opinion, um, ten thousand dollars is the limit, I'm willing to change that. Okay. Okay. Councilor Denny. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, so the um, cost of council here, uh, in in your uh, back to your pie chart, I think it represented like one percent of operating budget. Uh, how does that compare to other municipalities? Would you know? I don't have that answer. However, I can bring that back to council at the next council meeting. Thank you. Councilor Varkas? Through the chair, just looking at conferences, seminars, and meetings, none of the years we've come close to spending even $15,000. I'm wondering if we can knock another $5,000 off that this year. My thoughts were, can we knock the mileage down to 500? Yep. Because in, yeah, 22, we had 1,000 and we used 200. And then 23, we had 1,000 and used almost 300. Yep. Any other ideas about this slide? Nope. I think we can move on. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next is administration. Again, so wages are up. Um, the wages that um, at the budget for wages, um, there was uh, there is one position that has been um, eliminated and will not be replaced this year. One of the administrative due to, um, you know, um, budget constraints. So what you see in this budget is um, current um, wages for staff for two administrative positions, not what we have in our um, fees um, remuneration schedule. Well, if you see, there's uh, three administrative positions. Uh, unfortunately, we had to uh, cut down to two, so to um, um, keep uh, rate increases um, more um, in line. Yes, um, and then so we're. Um, budgeting $532,000 for administrative budget and wages, um, and then payroll benefits um, are budgeted accordingly. Um, next line is training. We are we have uh, quite a few new employees. Uh, we're planning on uh, sending them on training, provide them as much um, education as possible uh, in order for them to uh, do their jobs. Uh, wages transfer in, that's the um, one third of administrative assistant uh, wage that is being allocated to parks and recreation. It goes into uh, under administration as wages transfer in and wages transfer out is our uh, water, or I should call it accounting clerk's position. 50% of that position's wages are being allocated um, to water department. Uh, conferences and seminars, um, I am budgeting $10,000. Um, it is, um, there is, there's, always um, um, great way for our staff to 
send them on conferences uh, to uh, do uh, to network with other municipalities. So that's always uh, beneficial for us. So I I think uh, ten thousand uh, dollars having um, you know um, six staff members um, that could potentially go on conference is a reasonable amount. Membership and dues. So those are uh, typical AMCTO memberships, any municipal um, uh, memberships that we pay, any professional memberships. Mileage. So typically when our employees uh, use their own vehicle, they submit for mileage. We're budgeting $1,500 for that. And then meals uh, when on conference or, or training or anywhere um, or even, um, you know, um, work through lunch. That's what the meals were budgeting thousand dollars. Employee recognition. So um, as of this year, and we are, um, our organizational review is our uh, plan that we are trying to um, implement and put in place. One of the, uh, one of the recommendations was uh, to um, implement town hall meetings with our employees. The very first town hall meeting will be happening at the end of uh, last week of April. So we're probably, we are planning on having that meeting with all our uh, municipal employees and end that meeting with uh, lunch. Grants and donations, that's the $30,000 that is allocated to uh, community grants. Staff recruitment, $5,000. And uh, for asset management, um, I provided council with detailed notes. So $38,000 is for GIS shared position with Township of Southwold. Um, $20,000, as I mentioned to you, we have to um, spend a little bit of money to uh, complete uh, asset management requirements uh, for 2022 and 2024. That $20,000, in case we need help uh, from the software provider, which I'm pretty sure we will need. Um, so there is money allocated to that. And um, we pay $20, uh, $25,000 uh, in software license fee for our asset management program. And then $14,000 we allocated for GIS student position for this summer. So the total for uh, asset management um, this year is roughly $97,000. Health and safety, $1,000 um, last year. Not that we didn't spend any money on health and safety. It's just for some reason the cost was not allocated to that account, I would have to look into that to see because um, there was there was expenses. It's just the, probably the allocation. It was probably miscoded. Um, marriage license, that's the cost of, of issuing marriage license. $3,000, boot and clothing allowance. So as per our municipal policy, um, all full-time employees are entitled to uh, footwear allowance of $150 and clothing allowance for $150. So that allowance is usually processed uh, once budget is passed. So all office staff will receive uh, $300 um, that they could put towards their clothing and footwear allowance. Councilor Denning. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, so you had budgeted for uh, $2,400 in revenue for marriage licenses, but the cost of issuing those licenses is 3,000. So um, would it be worth considering increasing the cost of providing that service just to cover our costs at the very least? Um, I That question I will direct to the clerk as I am not familiar with uh, issuing marriage license 
Um, uh, okay. Certainly what I can do is I can do uh, a poll around to the other municipalities to see what their costs are uh, to make sure that one, we are in line with it, with everybody. And then also uh, certainly taking a look at, at increasing them slightly, at least to recoup our, our costs. Um, so that is in line and I can bring that back. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, and um, 911 emergency, this is the bill we get from um, from the county for 911 emergency services. Last year it was 2320. Um, this year we're budgeting $2,500. Insurance, we have no control over that, $16,200. We already renewed it uh, and paid for. Uh, phone and internet, $9,000. Software license, so there is uh, several different programs that the municipality is using, um, such as Laserfish, Microsoft, um, Citywide, uh, sorry, not Citywide, it's not included in it, Zoom, GreenTag for um, software for electronic signs, um, uh, e-solutions, um, your um, uh, agenda uh, software, and, and of course, our financial software, USTI. So that $50,000 um, consists of all the software license that the municipality is paying. Equipment lease is the uh, lease for the photocopier and printer. Uh, equipment maintenance um, is um, basically, um, so besides the lease fees, um, we also pay so much uh, per um, um, photocopy for printed material for the photocopier and the printer that we lease, as well as um, there has been, we have been having issues with our folding machines. So um, those are that money captures um, the repair and maintenance of our folding machine. Um, for equipment purchase, that $5,000 is allocated to uh, computer equipment, um, uh, monitors, uh, keyboards, that kind of stuff that might be necessary for staff to have. Um, subscriptions, just um, uh, there is only, I believe there's only a couple. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head which ones they are, um, they are municipal subscriptions. Um, and I recommend that we don't cancel them, but I will bring that, uh, if council would like to know what they are, I can bring that back in information. Office supplies, so office supplies is just the typical paper envelopes, um, you know, uh, pens and that kind of stuff. Uh, postage, um, I'm allocating 7,000 um, towards administration. Um, last year, we ended up with $8,200. However, there was an extra uh, mail that was sent. Uh, we don't anticipate that this year. So I think, you know, $7,000 is the appropriate amount. Advertising, uh, cost of advertising, typically in a newspaper and bank charges. Um, those, as you can see, they fluctuate. Um, now with additional service that we just implemented, which is e-transfer, um, those bank charges might be uh, slightly um, higher. Legal, um, $30,000, uh, um, I don't anticipate any issues, but however, you know, with us not having, with being small municipality, not having a, a legal department uh, in staff, unfortunately, we have no choice but to budget uh, that amount. And audit, this, those are the audit fees that we pay annually to uh, our auditors. There is uh, nothing for consulting services um, contracted services. This is our um, uh, services for our IT. Um, 
develop and, and then 30,600 is the cost of uh, development charges background study. That $100,000 is for um, the adjustment that could possibly have to be made for pay equity review. And then uh, transfer from reserves. I am proposing of uh, transferring um, money in the account. Uh, the account number is, so is 0133030. So if you refer to your reserve schedule, uh, you'll see that there is a uh, reserves, uh, it's prior year's capital. There is approximately $40,000 left. Um, those are, that account was created um, more than 10 years ago. Um, there is money left over for projects that perhaps were not completed or um, just, you know, or maybe perhaps left over. Um, I don't, um, there's uh, not much detail. It's an old account. And so what I'm proposing is to just clean up uh, that account, use that money towards this year's budget uh, to offset uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, additional costs of um, our projects. So that for that, I would need council's resolution and I can bring that back at the next council meeting if council is okay with that. And then additional item, um, this was brought to my attention recently. Um, it was not part of our uh, capital budget discussion. Um, we're gonna have to purchase the share of folder, new folding machine for our letters. Ours um, is not that old. However, we received a letter from um, the service provider that parts are no longer available. So, you know, if something happens to that folding machine, we're done, we're gonna have to fold over 3000 tax bills by hand. <laughs> so- We can do that during council meetings. <laughs> so- <laughs> And that concludes administration budget. Does anybody have any questions? Councilor Vakas? Through the chair, I'm just curious about what happened with our audit in 2022. It was really affordable. And then in 2023, did we have more work for them? No. So what it is, so as you know, the audit usually happens, is concluded near, um, at the end of second quarter of the following year. So um, typically, the reason why the cost is fluctuating, because you know, we missed the accrual for the previous year. So we were trying to catch up, you know, um, 20 previous year and then the current year's audit. Councilor Denny. Thank you, through the chair. Just a couple of things that stood out for me. Um, great work, thank you so much. Um, the printer lease, absolutely get that. Um, the cost per copy, absolutely get that. But wouldn't you think that with a lease agreement that repairs would be included in the cost of the lease. Mm -hmm. At least that's my experience. Cost of the repair, council, uh, Councillor Denning, is included. It's just uh, we pay uh, maintenance per uh, copy printed. So there's, um, I can tell you, uh, there's so much cents per black and white copy and so much per colored copy. And that's basically our maintenance fee for that photocopier. Okay. So there's three, there's there's equipment lease, equipment maintenance, and equipment purchase. Those all pertain to the printer? No, equipment purchase pertains to the purchase of our computer software. Okay, all right, thank you for that. And then uh, my second question, if I may, is just with regards to um, uh, you know, letters and paper and printing. Are we looking like there is a path forward to becoming more digital when it comes to um, sending out tax bills and invoices and all that. Is is there the belief that we'll get there someday? I don't definitely cannot answer that. Uh, unfortunately, that um, 
you know, we are in rural community and um, a lot of our um, residents like to receive a paper copy of the bill. We, every time, every time the bill goes out, we try to encourage our residents to receive electronic copy because that copy is available. All they have to do is provide us with their email address. However, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, a, every personal discussion. So, and roughly for water utility bills, we have 10% um, of uh, all water and sewer customers that signed up for email delivery. If I may, through the mm -hmm. years to follow up on that, uh, I I recognize that we are in a rural community and 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 how wonderful that is to be a part of a rural community. But ten percent seems incredibly low, especially post pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I I wonder if there is value in investigating uh, some sort of incentive um, for folks to switch over. And I understand the cost of stamps and paper and. And I'm certainly not talking about an incentive that's going to end up costing taxpayers money, but perhaps be equivalent to the cost of, of stamps and paper if, if there was some sort of um, opportunity for folks to save money by making that shift, perhaps that would encourage them to give it a second thought. Councilor Denning, I brought this up in 2019 because I couldn't believe the amount of postage that we paid. <laughs> Absolutely shocked me the first time I went through a budget. Um, I couldn't just, I just couldn't believe it. And we did do a push on email then. It's gone up since to have our, it's mostly our water bills. I think that people get by email, uh, by email versus tax mm -hmm. bill. And it was just marginal. It's just slowly grown over time, but not much. But I agree. I would love to just push everyone to have it by email. I get my email. Very simple. If I don't remember the amount, I go back in my email and go, oh yeah, got this. Um, I don't have to look for paper. Paper's clutter to me. So yeah, it would be great if we could do something like that because the cost of the folding machine, the cost of the postage, the cost of the time for our staff just seems exorbitant. Yeah, I thought about that a long time ago. It's just crazy. Councillors, stay them. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, to Councillor Denning's point, I would point out that uh, there are a number of um, services where paper billing is no longer available. Right. including banking, um, cellular phones, you know, there's a number of services that I, I have personally, or we have through the farm that you, you just can't get a paper bill anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that we necessarily go that route, but I certainly think that a, a push in that direction would be appropriate. So. Yeah. My thoughts would be a phase out. Phasing out by this year, you're going to be getting an emailed copy. I don't know. Just a thought. Any other thoughts? No. It just seems a lot of money. Sorry, through through the chair. Uh, just one more point on that to add mm -hmm. on to that. Um, you know, I I find it hard to believe that even but I think that almost everybody has an email address at this point in time. I mean, we're we're 2024 now. I I understand that again, uh, to Councillor Denning's point, it is a rural community. Um, you know, we have, you know, a variety of residents that live here, but I think almost everybody has an email account at this point. And I think if we were to make a hard phase out, we could eliminate a lot of these costs. So just a... an education to that. Correct. Yeah. By phasing this out, we are saving X amount in our budget each year going towards and such and such and such and such and such and such all do not have paper billing. Let's become paperless. And maybe even put an environmental spin on it as well. Councillor Denny? There there will always, uh, through the chair, there will always be people who, and I hear it all the time, say, I will go to the grave without an email. Um, so perhaps one of the things that can be considered is making e-billing the standard and paper billing a premium service that you would pay for. That will definitely help implementing email uh, bill delivery. Absolutely. Uh, we can certainly look into that.
Do we know what percentage that we have of, you said 10% you thought? There's approximately 10%. Um, I, I can't answer uh, for tax bills. It, that um, rate is probably significantly lower uh, as a lot, most of the residents um, ask for a printed copy of a tax bill. So I'm not sure if uh, tax bill could be phased out as a lot of people use it for, um, you know, income tax purposes. But we can, we can definitely come up with some kind of incentive for our residents or charge if paper copy is required. We could do a residential tax bills are E and business ones are not because business, I'm just thinking when you do your taxes in this business, you hand over to someone their paperwork or you E transfer, you transferred or whatever. But if you were a, you know, lowly old Teresa on Queen Street, I just fill out my stuff and someone asked me to see it and someone asked me to see it. No one has ever asked me to see my tax bill and I don't know how long. When I do my taxes. So that could be it too. Michelle, through the chair, I think most bookkeepers and tax are, are fine now because you're sending almost everything electronically mm -hmm. to them. So I would say that businesses should go the same. They want it, they can print it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good discussion, um, Council Statham. Through the chair. Sorry, one one further question. I think I would be interested to know if there's an additional cost that would be involved in sending out just e-bills. I mean, I'm assuming that you would have someone that you would have to have someone that would organize that. We'd have to have some, probably some proprietary software, additional licensing, or is this no, already in place? No, it's part of our software. Is it? All, okay. uh, for us, for our, for my staff, it would be just adding um, the property owner's email address on file. Click a button, off it goes. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. How much would that save in the budget? Can you bring us back those numbers? Oh, I can. Um... You're doing them in your head right now. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I can bring this information back at the next council. Sure, that would for be sure. Great. Thank you. Are we done with this slide? Are we done with administration? Is everybody I suggest if anybody wants to take a. Comfort break. We've been going at this for a while because it's uh, I just passed five thirty. If that's okay. Okay, so we'll take a break for ten minutes. Okay. Uh, our next uh, department is municipal buildings. Um, so um, this uh, section covers expenses for uh, the back shop and office building. Um, $8,200 is, uh, is the revenue. That's the only uh, revenue um, that we uh, receive from uh, Bell. And it's kind of allocated under uh, municipal buildings, uh, but it's just for the rental of the lot that Bell uh, um have their building. Uh, there is no wages allocated to that account. Uh, and then utilities, five th we're uh, budgeting $5,000 for hydro, $3,000 for gas, $300 for water, and insurance, uh, that $58,000 that you see is the actual amount allocated to that department. So that amount's not gonna change. Uh, five thousand dollars for uh, any maintenance and repairs for that for both um, buildings, and twelve thousand dollars for uh, janitorial services that we um, we obtain from um, Giles Janitorial, and twenty five hundred dollars is for grounds maintenance. That will go with our parking lot extension. We're planning on extending parking lot on our municipal side to create more parking spaces for our employees to um, relieve uh, that space for fire department. 
as well as um, we're going to uh, kind of clean up uh, the area uh, on the side of the building uh, and put perhaps um, flower bed on the side so it looks nice and neat and clean. So uh, the total amount budgeted for that department is hundred and uh, almost hundred and three thousand dollars. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, we're gonna move down to Old Town Hall. Um, not a lot of expenses go through that uh, department. Um, the only uh, utility account that we pay is Hydro. Uh, Hydro is still connected in that building. Other utilities are disconnected. And insurance, this is the actual amount uh, we're gonna pay this year. We paid this year, 16,239.96. And then, um, uh, Demolition of the uh, back garage, it's been, um, uh, council is aware of it, um, hasn't been approved yet. However, I am proposing on, we have um, building reserves um, and I am proposing of uh, moving $30,000 from building reserves to cover the cost of demolition. So the total, net total for um, um, Old Town Hall Building is seventeen thousand seven thirty nine ninety six. Are there any questions? Not seeing any. Okay, now we're going to move on to fire department. Uh, fire chief is here, and he will present the, um, his operating budget to council. Go ahead, Jeff. Sure, thank you. And through the chair, uh, it's all of council. Um, I'll go through the operating budget. I'll speak to any lines that uh, uh, I guess I could speak directly to, but obviously feel free to to ask anything that I don't touch on. Um, revenue, uh, MTO. So pretty consistently, obviously MTO, uh, 401 incidents do fluctuate from year to year to bit. You'll see that looking back a couple of years, but, uh, um, that's a fairly standard, hopefully projection on, uh, on revenue that our coordinator, um, um, invoices for, uh, we do have a grant, uh, we'll come back to it, uh, under building. Uh, we got a small, oh, sorry. I got, we got a Sorry, the, the first grant is uh, for fire safety, actually a, a small grant, but still important um, for, we got a couple of TV, smart TVs for training um, for uh, through the fire marshals public safety grant and the rebate for the lighting program uh, is below that. So that relates to the, the proposed lighting upgrade at station two. Um, wages, uh, you'll see based on training, um, higher incidents last year, um, that's why we reflected, Magda and I reflected um, our 2024 budget for wages uh, based on 2023 actuals. Again, there's there's obviously some fluctuation, unpredictable fluctuation there, depending mostly on incidents throughout the year. Public education, uh, going down a few lines. Um, most of that goes towards pub ed materials that we buy um, for, for public education events. Um, and anything additional we may may use, but most of that goes towards the 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 printed material, hats, um, other pub ed messaging that uh, we utilize at different events. Uh, training, you'll note uh, the training is is down a bit from last year. We do have um, less recruits in our ten oh one recruit class this year. Um, three down from I think it was six or even seven at one point last year. So that's part of that reduction in training. Uh, there was considerable training last year. Uh, mileage is uh, um, 11,000 there is the projected budget for mileage. Um, we have kind of looked at that last year or two in, in a way to, to adjust or, or lower that cost. Some things we have been uh, considering is uh, a shared vehicle use. Um, uh, you wouldn't totally eliminate mileage costs, but uh, a lot of that, and I, I will note the, as, as council is surely aware, the vast majority of training opportunities happen right in Elgin Middlesex. So it's not like we're going to Gravenhurst, the firefighters aren't traveling very far. There is some in, in Oxford County and a few other places, but the majority of training is, is local, but it's, it's regular training. The firefighters, when we do encourage carpooling uh, when possible, um, but uh, anyways, a shared vehicle use with another department is something we've we've 
we've considered and and I think we've even in future capital uh, um, considerations included that um, just to bring that mileage cost down. Uh, employee recognition. So uh, we we did touch on that uh, in, in previous conversations. Um, and some of that is definitely towards like we had an awards, of course, banquet back in November. Um, there is, I would I'd recommend we still keep some costs in there, uh, mainly for uh, retirement access, uh, years of service bins, a few kind of fire department specific things that wouldn't necessarily fall under a, um, I guess, a joint uh, event, if that makes sense. Uh, PPE. Um, so that is mostly, I'll just scroll down from that, mostly our bunker gear. Uh, we Our bunker gear costs have, uh, going back a few years, years we put out a, I believe it was in 20, 2021, I think we bought 20 sets of bunker gear to kind of catch up on our replacement schedule um, in the fire departments. And we've been buying five, six, seven, eight sets since that. We, we brought a report to council that time on our replacement schedule for bunker gear to get back kind of on a regular uh, replacement schedule. So um, we're down, I'll say down to, but more, more we're into a regular, I'd say five is, is a fairly fair annual replacement cost. Now a set of bunker gear has gone up significantly, like a lot of other things in the past um, few years. Um, we used to be able to budget 2000 um, low 2000s up to 2,500. We're now, uh, in the, into a $3,200 range approximately uh, for bunker gear. So that has changed quite a bit. We do, and on that note, we do do a kind of a joint purchase or order through the county. So almost every Elgin County Fire Department uh, orders the same spec, same manufacturer. So we, we do find some savings that way in a joint offer, in a joint order, but uh, still some significant cost increases. Uh, operational supply is a small item there, but that uh, we itemized that. Uh, I think last year we we put that extra item in there, um, a lower amount at two thousand. But those are supplies that we ideally can recoup through uh, through MTO um, billing for oil absorbent um, oil, other absorbent supplies. Foam is another one, so we've tried to kind of keep that separate uh, for tracking purposes. Uh, building repairs and maintenance, and I will. Um, and we'll add a note. There's a note five there. Um, so station one bay door wrap is something that uh, um, the the door, there's been, I'm sure council's aware, there's been, if you can still see the the impressions of, of previous um, lettering or wrap, I wouldn't call it wrap, lettering on the, the overhead doors in Rodney. So we've kind of just amongst the officers and the station discussed different options of, of either, depending what would, what was more economical painting would be a potential option because they are starting to look a little weathered, a little old, um, or potentially there's some pretty neat and sometimes pretty inexpensive wrapping options for either fire prevention or just wrapping them in the, in a white or a red or whatever we would coordinate with, uh, with obviously the, the shared use building to make sure, but, uh, um, we put, uh, some $2,800 on there for some, uh, I'll call it freshening up some updating and hopefully maybe incorporate some fire prevention messaging. Um, on the doors there. And then, as I mentioned, station two. So we had a quote uh, for lighting upgrade in uh, um, in station two here in West Lorne. It is, uh, I think it's fair to say it's, it's. I mean, the building is uh, built in the early 90s, I believe. So, I mean, the lighting has not been, um, as far as we can tell, upgraded since that. And there is definitely, I think, due for it's it's dim in spots. If you if you're in there, we do a lot of training in there. Um and uh we did there was a lighting um rebate available to absorb some of those costs. And and if approved, uh something we would be looking at to do in uh, station one likely the next couple years. Um, there's obviously lots of options, newer options with LED lighting, save even save some uh, utility costs on that. But uh, uh, look and do a lighting upgrade. Um, I will just note, uh, and, and I'll take the the mistake there. We we will have to work with Magda on adjusting that building repairs and maintenance line because you'll see those two itemized um, items there. 
uh, equal the 8200 but uh, given past years especially last year we got into some building repairs that uh, we may have to up that a little bit I, I do know we're due for um waiting for pricing but the for just for an example day-to-day -day maintenance stuff the hot water tank in station two here in west lauren um started to leak and actually we were, we realized there's there's two hot water tanks that uh building was designed with two for some reason so uh, we're looking to to eliminate one and a little probably go to a tankless system for for something more efficient but uh regardless we will have to I'll work with magda to adjust that uh that amount uh, as appropriate um equipment purchase note six so we've got some uh, defibrillators we've got a few itemized uh, um projects or, or pieces of equipment there uh defibrillators are defibrillators in uh both stations are uh, are definitely nearing end of life we would keep them as a secondary defib on on another truck but uh um and and most dog departments have gone towards a, a defibrillator that's compatible with ems so that's something we've we've put in the proposal for this year that would be um and sort of that i should put i should clarify that's for two so one for each station um at that cost um ipads we do have an ipad on each pumper in each station now uh they've been pretty popular um so we're, we're proposing to buy a couple more um to add uh, to another truck in each station the firefighters uh there's a an app they can use they can they have cell data so they can um um, access the emergency response guideline uh, out in the highway or wherever it may be, um, take notes, et cetera. So they, they're quite a handy tool. Um, hoses and nozzles, um, we try to include some money each year. Um, like everything else, costs have gone up quite a bit on hose, and we're into a regular routine now of, of testing hose. So, I mean, every year you do get a small percentage, but you get some hose failures. So we were trying to get into a routine of buying at least a, a small quantity of hose every year. Um, power tools, hand tools. So we, we did propose this last year and have not, uh, and, and I think it wasn't kind of, it was improved or it was approved in the budget last year. We didn't specifically spend any funding on the power tools, but uh, that's, again, most, uh, Fire departments have gone away kind of from the generator and plugged in corded tools. And, and like everybody knows, there's there's lots of reliable um, uh, power tool options out there. Um, auto extrication gloves and the larger item there at the bottom is a thermal, thermal imaging camera. Um, so we have only one station currently has one. And we are uh, actually we have a demo scheduled in a couple weeks uh, for a couple different uh, suppliers to come in and do a demo on. Um, on what we would call a tech thermal imaging camera um, to buy to buy an updated or, or a new um, camera for that. Um, let me scroll back up. Uh, equipment rental. I do hope uh, this is one we can maybe, hopefully we can adjust as the year goes on. Um, and that we, we've been in the position to rent bunker gear. Um, there's a few other items in there, including a tar rental for, for Firecom use, but uh, we have been renting bunker gear for the last few years just uh, um, to make sure we had a current equipment for everybody um, so that uh, we hope we can, I would propose we could probably lower that uh, as we go throughout the year. Um, community risk assessment was already mentioned. Um, and I will touch on the transfer, transfer to reserves. So, um, the, the tanker and just a quick update to, uh, around the topic for council. We are still waiting for, for pricing on, uh, on a three tanker purchase. Um, we did travel, I believe I maybe mentioned this at a previous meeting. We traveled up to uh, Bruce County to look at a tanker, the three departments. So we are still waiting on a couple options to bring back to council. And then the $30,000 communications uh, transfer um, council may recall that from last year that uh, we're, we're due in the next I'll say three years likely for a fire communications replacement across the county. So we've been putting uh, some funding or putting, sorry, putting money into reserves for, for funding for that upcoming costs. Happy to answer any other questions. To the floor, any questions? Councilor Vacas? Through the chair. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I guess I just, for me and for the community, if I were to look currently at your wages, 
and your contracted services, we are spending more on a volunteer fire department than we are spending on the entire staff of our rec programming. 60% of our administration cost. And so I just need to like, is it because of the increase in the number of calls? We saw a 30% increase between 2022 and 2024. And I guess my other concern is, is that last year we had a budget and then the fire department was over by $119,000. So it's just concerning that it's a ton of money. Just need to understand if calls training, how much of this training is necessary, how often they're doing it, because it's leading to increased training costs, increased mileage costs, and increased wages. Sure. Yes. Thank you. And and through the chair, uh, a couple notes I'll, I'll I'll respond to on that. So uh, there's definitely I mean, we we've been I guess you'd say proactive in in training um, over the past few years and and um, a large percentage of that and we could break it down for for council further if if like for incident costs, training costs, um, administration costs because there is a cost in there for for administration of course to under contracted services um, and and I guess. A, to put it uh, somewhat in perspective, um, um, we have um, 30, off the top of my head, 36, 37 uh, firefighters, and, and then um, plus myself and our, our coordinator. Um, so a full-time, and it varies, of course, I would acknowledge between or among different uh, cities and municipalities, but but a full-time firefighter wage uh, would, would range I mean, after they're up up through the classes, but I mean, a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty thousand for one full time firefighter in uh, um, per year, um, and that's I think conservatively even without without overtime. But uh, so I think it's I, I totally agree and acknowledge it's a, it's a significant cost to the taxpayer and to the um, to the municipality. But uh, we do have a staff of of I'll say close to forty firefighters that can um, are available twenty four seven to to respond to any emergencies. Um, training, and I will say training is something we've really encouraged if, if council was, was, and, and I acknowledge the, the increase in cost, we could, we could look a little closer at limiting, um, I'll say the number of courses a firefighter could, could take in a year. We, we haven't, and, I, and we haven't taken that step yet. We've encouraged training and we've kind of informally said for those, some of those are interested, you know, we try to keep it to three or four courses a year. But we are paying their wages to to go for those courses. Uh, we are paying them the travel time and or the mileage, I should say, to to get there and back. So, I I think it's uh, there's a few pieces to the puzzle there. We could we could break it down a little bit more. Incidents is uh, incidents um, off the top of my head. The 2022 incident total, I believe, was 104, and in 2023. I believe it was 124, 126 off the top of my head. So we're, there's there's 20 to 22 additional calls in there. How many of those calls are strictly fire or could be considered something that has been downloaded off of the province, be it EMS? Would you be able to provide us with a like a look at that for the year? Yeah, for sure. That through the chair, that's something I could well I can bring back to to a further council meeting and. Um, Last year, we changed our um, two response agreement for medical calls, um, and, and, and you know what? I, I've been quite uh, satisfied with with we have not seen a we've definitely seen a an increase in calls for medicals, but nothing drastic. Um, and and to, during the day, we'll send two apparatus um, to a medical assist call just to ensure with daytime availability that we're not sending a firefighter kind of on their own or, or two on their own, but. I think it's probably fair to say in, in a in a medical assist call during the day, uh, we wouldn't be paying more than 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 five or on a good day six firefighters for for a call. And at night, I mean, there's there's a truck going with three or four. We will get additional ones coming to the hall, but uh, so I think assisting EMS, there's definitely a, a, a cost percentage to be considered there. But but the rest of it, um, and we can recoup not our wages. We do recoup our truck, uh, our apparatus costs, and and some of the um, consumables for for MTO calls, but um, and we we can look a little. We can look at we can look more at uh, recouping some of those MVC costs um, 
on county and municipal roads. It's something we have not done up to this point. The, the, the largest percentage is definitely on Highway 401, but um, it's something that we can, because uh, our, our fees bylaw does support that. So that's something we could look at uh, closer if, if if that was a desire of council. We, I, My personal just uh, thought on that is we've, we haven't pursued that uh, too closely. Um, a lot of it comes down to, and I'd have to review the exact bylaw wording, but whether the involved parties are residents or not. So um, the the thought pro the thought sometimes is that, you know what, uh, residents, if they're involved, they're already paying their taxes for that fire service. So we, we don't want to necessarily charge them anything extra through insurance, but something we can look at if, if further if council, council wishes. And to note, you have quite a few new um, or newer firefighters that are needing training and being brought up and mentored. So that's going to add to that uh, training line as well. Any other comments from council? Councilor Denning? Thank you. And through the chair, a uh, couple questions to you, Chief. First of all, um, do we, uh, as West Elgin uh, Fire Department, do we not charge fines anymore or is everybody in West Elgin behaving themselves? Uh, quick answer. Yes, everybody's behaving themselves. But uh, through the chair, uh, we uh, I'll speak firstly to burn um, um, complaints. So actually, we, we just discussed this at a recent training session about uh, um, burn compliance in the municipality and the burn permit system that we've we've actually stayed, I think, saved significant staff time over the past couple of years as we've shifted uh, to, to a fully online system so that um, I think that's been honestly very efficient, and we do overall have very good uh, fine or sorry burn compliance, burn uh, permit compliance within the municipality. Um, when it comes to fines for, I mean, smoke alarms would be the other top one that would be on my list. We do start with uh, um, education first. I mean, if there's a if there's a repetitive problem, I mean, you can get into to finding through the the POA, but but uh, we haven't had the need to do that, and I think that I would I would say that's fairly consistent across the the county that uh, repeat incidents for sure. But we, but you know what we we haven't uh, we've had very good compliance overall for both those things. Through the chair, thank you for that. Perfect. Um, and my only other comment or question was with regards to uh, the thermal imaging camera. Uh, Seeing as we are a small um, municipality, uh, one fire department, two stations, uh, do we look at some of these second purchases and really consider if having a second in such a small community is is worthwhile? Excellent question. And through the chair uh, to Councillor Denning, it uh, um, there's definitely some equipment on our, our trucks, our apparatus that uh, would, would fall into that category. Uh, on that note, we are a rescue in um, here in Station Two in West Lawrence. So we've kind of somewhat converted that to better utilize that apparatus. We converted that truck to more of a a rescue first out the door to MVCs. So um, we have uh, we have most of our MVC equipment on that truck. So uh, I'll use the example of come up a, couple, over, a few times over the years, and it was in the budget request from from uh, one of the stations this year to buy a, a second set of struts. So I, I would use that as a as a good example of um, I don't think we can justify a second set of struts. They they they're one of those tools that they're it's good to have in the toolbox, but we've used we, they get seldomly used in MBC. So we don't need each station to have a set of like uh, stabilization struts for an MBC for a vehicle on its side or something. Um, but I will say a thermal imaging camera, although it is it is. Um, um, a, not an expensive piece of equipment. It's one of our first tools on, on the frontline pumper to, to go in and they will use it even, uh, I mean, alarm sounding calls, um, any, any kind of unknown call. Um, that's one of our first tools that the, the first, uh, the first crew on scene should be using. So that would be, we could definitely consider some other uh, piece of equipment. Uh, and I think we have tried to, to eliminate, eliminate some duplication, but I wouldn't, I, I would just, suggest that we wouldn't consider a thermal imaging camera to be one of those pieces of equipment. Thank you through the chair and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you, you sort of answered my, my follow-up question, but uh, there's, there's sort of a recognition that historically speaking, 
we we had two stations that that operated fairly independently many years ago mm -hmm. and your your efforts your intention is to streamline these two stations to continue to work more and more closely like like one unit with shared resources for efficiency purposes and being mindful of course of response time and safety and all those things that are important yeah to the chair uh um yes i think that's always in mind and and, and i think a, a great example of that is it's not an, a, a piece of uh, equipment on the trucks but our air breathing air compressor so uh, two years ago i just 2021 20 2021, I believe it was, we had, uh, so that's a good example, both stations or previous fire departments had their own breathing air compressor. Um, and we, uh, I think, honestly, the consensus of the department was we don't need each station to have one for the use. We can share one. Um, so that was, uh, uh, I believe, a $65,000 budget item at that time. So we replaced those two older breathing air compressors. One was out of service with one new one to serve the department. Um, and I would, I mean, down the road, um, they both have newer washing machine like bunker gear extractors and dryers um, both stations previous to my arrival both stations had those but uh, i mean replacement wise down the road that's i mean there's some efficiency to be found there too i think in replacing some of those things thank you anything else from council on that uh budget items for fire department not saying anything thank you for all your time and effort to put into this and Where are we heading now? Uh, we're moving on to policing. Um, so again, um, contracted services is our police contract uh, uh, that we have currently with OPP uh, went up slightly. Um, this year we're budgeting $969,606. And court costs, um, this is, um, so usually uh, court costs um, are being reconciled and um, uh, sent for payment to the municipalities quite late. Uh, there is only, I um, believe, one quarter that has been billed to our municipality. There is still more invoices to come. So, um, but we're budgeting $10,000. Total nine hundred seventy nine thousand dollars six oh six per police department. Conservation Authority, um, um, Lower Thames. Uh, just a week ago, they uh, approved their budget. Um, our portion um, allocation for um, Conservation Authority is seventy thousand six seven twenty one dollars. Does anybody have any questions? Not seeing any. Okay, uh, next department is building inspection. Um, building inspection is doing extremely well in terms of revenue. Um, there has been over uh, 120 uh, building permits issued last year. We're expecting um, the same amount or even higher this year. Um, it's hard to determine, but uh, we're budgeting $114,000 in building permits. Um, septic permits, um, roughly $7,000, and plumbing, uh, very small amounts, uh, 500 for plumbing permits and septic clearance certificates, $100. Um, as for uh, expenses, operating expenses, that $6,100 is for the license. Uh, we uh, All building uh, permits are being issued uh, through cloud permit. Um, so, uh, as of this year, um, no paper copies are being accepted by our building departments. We only accept um, electronic copies. If uh, someone has no access to internet, uh, staff is uh, there to help them submit building permit electronically. It, it provides um, efficiencies to the building department. As you know, we share that position with Southwold. Um, this, you know, having a building permit application submitted electronically uh, significantly uh, speeds up the process um, and inspection uh, timing as well. And for contracted services, we have uh, two building inspectors um, that kind of uh, 
work um, help us uh, from Southwold. We have uh, sh uh, shared services agreement with Township of Southwold. The cost associated with um, that position is $94,150 for next year, which will, um, uh, we're, and based on that, we're estimating um, surplus in that department of $21,000. Any questions on building? Um, emergency measures, um, there was very um, small amount allocated to emergency measures. Um, we don't expect any cost associated with emergency measures. So I did not put anything in the budget for this year. Uh, let's hope for the best. Um, for bylaw enforcement, so very, um, um, not too many uh, expenses. Uh, one is postage, um, and then the other one is contracted services. As you can see, that number is dropped, has dropped significantly from previous year. So last year we had uh, bylaw services for two and a half days. Um, this year, um, based on uh, service request, uh, we have eliminated uh, that position down to eight hours per week um, just to, uh, you know. So there, we're, hope, we're hoping, uh, however, um, so we're budgeting eight hours per week for the rest of the year. However, if uh, things, if there is a, um, if the complaints from the public are increasing, unfortunately, we're going to have to um, ex extend those hours uh, with tenant, and they are open and willing to um, accommodate us any way uh, they can. Um, animal control, $10,000 is uh, the contract that we currently have with London Humane Society. Um, I uh, we're budgeting additional two thousand dollars for canine rescue uh, for a year to date. Um, Humane Society was in our municipality three times. There is already thousand dollars spent on uh, picking up lost dogs. So if this continues, you know, uh, this type of service is very expensive. Um, over $300, it costs us every over $300 to come pick up a dog and put the dog in the shelter. Councilor Vacas? Through the chair, often it's dogs who've gotten out of people's backyards as we read about on Facebook. Is there any way for us to recoup the costs from people who have had their dogs loose in our town? Well, um, I don't know if there's a way as um, basically um, Humane Society um, basically um, calls us and uh, requires our authorization to pick up a dog. So, and those three situations that we have experienced in our municipality is the residents uh, found um, dog on their property uh, they couldn't find the owner. They kept them overnight. Typically, most of them, they keep them overnight, uh, hoping that, uh, you know, uh, someone will come. They We help them advertise. They notify the municipality. We advertise on uh, municipal websites, social media, um, you know, but there's a point where residents don't want to hold on to that uh, lost animal, and we have no choice and send um, um, a humane society to pick them up. And um, basically, so when they, um, there's a cost associated uh, with that um, service to the municipality. And uh, I believe humane society, um, if the, the owner is found, there is a cost associated to the owner, um, some kind of a penalty fee for, for um, boarding the dog for the period of time. Thank you for that. Any other questions, Councilor Denning? Through the chair, forgive me if we've already gone through it, but just looking at this particular um, 
line item, uh, dog tags. Um, there's a there's we we did do that at one time. Yes, um, through the chair, um, we have eliminated dog tags in. 2021. 2021 was last year when when we um, um, were um, issuing dog tags. And um, if you look at our uh, reserve schedules, uh, selling dog tags back then uh, provided us with significant surplus in that department. Um, however, at that time, we had animal control officer who would go door to door and make sure that whoever had the dog was um, paying for the dog tag. That service is no longer available. Um, the only option we had was with London Humane Society. Of course, that service can be improved to um, any needs we may have. However, the cost will increase. So this is the, right now we're obtaining basic service from Humane Society. Thank you for that. And again, through the chair, uh, is there is there any consideration or, or ability to, to have um, a dog tag, um, if we were to consider implementing this back in, to have our bylaw enforcement um, take on the, that specific task? If we're only talking about being able to justify their presence eight hours a week, it, does the math work in in applying tags and then having our bylaw enforcement contractor um, and, and do the enforcement part of that? Uh, through the chair, so our bylaw enforcement, uh, they take care of uh, animal control when they're on duty. Um, so um, when they're in the office and there's an issue with the dog, there's lost dog, they are willing to take that dog to Humane Society so we don't um, incur extra charges. Um, as for extra service and have that option available through tenant security, keep in mind that um, tenant security is a contracted company um, and we are um, paying them hourly rate of $75 an hour for their services. Um, you know, if you want extra service, if you want animal control in our means, so that will increase the amount of hours that they would have to spend on that particular um, uh, duty um, and the cost associated with it. I, I don't think um, it would be a viable option for our municipality. Um, and with dog tags, the reason why we eliminated dog tags, it was just an administrative nightmare. Um, there was, um, so many issues and, and then, you know, we had animal control officer who would go door to door, um, inspect properties, um, encourage people to pay, uh, dog tags. Then, uh, you know, we had, um, file with um, dog owners, um, we had to um, invoice them um, at the end of uh, inspection and time. And then, you know, it was uh, dog tag collections. And then for the ones that didn't pay, we had to transfer unpaid amounts to property taxes with the fees. It was, um, it was just um, administrative burden um, it's just uh, not, it, exactly. People would have dogs pass away and then they get a bill for them. They get upset and yeah, just went on and on. Any other questions about those item lines? No, okay. okay next is uh, municipal roads and I will turn it over to Lee. Uh, okay, thank you through the chair. Uh, we'll get started with the municipal roads. Um, the first one here is the revenue side. So you'll see that there's a grant for gas tax, which we receive uh, every year that goes in. That money can be used towards capital projects. We can 
we can put that money into reserves and save it up to use it on a big project or we can use it on a yearly basis. Um, the next one down is investing in Canada infrastructure. So we received a grant, um, if you remember back about three years ago for um, upgrades to Blacks Road. So bridge construction, culvert construction on Blacks Road. So we're just uh, in the process of wrapping that project up and that would be the portion that would come from that uh, infrastructure grant to finish that. EV charging stations. So the municipality did apply for a grant um, to put in EV charging stations in the town of West Lorne. If we are successful with that grant, that will be the amount, the 125.512 that we would receive for that project this year. Um, <clears throat> FSC roads, so that 150,000, it's an in and out, and I'll show you that down a little bit later in the budget, but that 150,000 is wages and machine time for public work staff that work in other departments. So if the staff are uh, digging a hole for a water main break, or if they are uh, pushing garbage at the landfill or uh, you know repairing something at the trailer park, um, we bill those other departments for that time and that money comes into the public works budget. County share of admin, so that 27,000 uh, under our agreement with the county for the maintenance of their road network, we're allowed to charge a 5% overhead on, on that contract amount. So that 27,000 is funds that we take out of the county budget and we bring them over as revenue to the municipal side. And then finally, the license fees. So any uh, aggregate production that happens within the municipality, so there's various uh, companies that have... Um, pits, gravel pits, and ours of the municipal pits are included in that. Based on the tonnage of material that comes out of those pits in a year, you have to pay a license fee. And so a portion of that license fee goes back to the, to the basically to the home municipality, the municipality that that gravel pit resides in. So that would be the revenue that we're receiving for uh, aggregate production in West Elgin. When we get down to the expense side, um, as we go through here, uh, you'll notice that each one of these uh, operations has a code A, B1, B2, and under each one of those, you'll see three um, headings. So the first one here, if we take an example, uh, A, bridges and culverts, the first line item there is wages. So in each one of these categories, the first line item will always be wages. So that's wages for public work staff that are doing that operation. The second line item is uh, machine time, the MT. So that is the amount that we bill ourselves for the use of the equipment. And the third line item is materials. So that's anything that comes to us as an invoice. So that might be materials, pipes that we have to buy for culvert installations. It might be equipment that we have to rent in order to do a certain project, or it might be contracted services such in the is such as the case of say, uh, brushing or tree removal. So if we have a contractor in to do a tree removal, um, that when the contractor sends that invoice, that would go into that and we code that, that would go under that third third uh, line, which is considered materials. So as we go through the first one uh, and remember that this is uh, on the municipal side. So these amounts are for work that we do to our municipal roads, not the county road network. So that's, we have two, budgets here, one municipal and one county that are mirrored very closely with the same operation codes. And that's how we keep track of what we spend on municipal versus county. So the first one is bridges and culverts. So that could be bridge maintenance, such as bridge washing, um, culvert installation, culvert repair, culvert cleanings. The second one there is B1, which is mowing and spraying. So that's uh, roadside mowing, that's our summer students that trim around guide rails and signs. Um, it's the spraying that we do through towns um, to get rid of the weeds. The third one there, B2, is brushing. So that uh, could be tree removal. It could be tree pruning. Um, it could be just brushing along the side of the road, uh, sumac, uh, areas like that that we have to keep clean. 
Um, B3, which is ditching. So that's um, fairly obvious. That's any ditching projects that we take on and that uh, the majority of that is in the road allowance along the side of the road. Catch basins. So that could be cleaning. Um, it could be repairs to basins. It could be investigation work if there's basins that are found not to be working. Um, so that includes any costs in keeping up basins within and that's mainly in the two villages, um, but there are basins uh, along the rural sections of road as well that obviously have to be cleaned and maintained also. Um, B5, you'll see there, it's a fairly small amount. So debris and litter, um, that could include being called if somebody's dumped something along the side of the road and the staff have to go pick it up. Um, that could be getting a call in the middle of the night to go and get a, a dead deer off the side of the road. Um, that was what would go underneath that B5 account. C1, hardtop wages. So that is anything that we do to our hard surfaced roads, um, such as coal patching. Uh, you'll see this year there is uh, an extra amount put into that. Um, we have selected one of our municipal tar and chip roads to receive what we would call a hot mix um, repair. So that is more labor intensive, obviously, than just going out and patching. Um, and that uses uh, hot mix instead of cold patch. So there's uh, extra money put into that. That is basically maintenance for that uh, surface treated road. <clears throat> C2 is, uh, is sweeping. So that would be any sweeping that we do uh, in the villages. Now that's not sweeping. The majority of the sweeping expenses that we have, you'll see that in the in the county budget because the county has the majority of the curb and gutter through our downtown sections. Uh, we have very, very little curb and gutter along municipal roads. Um, so there's not a lot in that as far as the municipal side goes. Shoulder maintenance wages, uh, machine time, materials, so that's anything. So if you kind of look at the hard top, that's what we do on the road, on the traveled portion itself. Shoulder maintenance would be if we're repairing uh, drop off along the edge of the road or, uh, you know, removing berms, something like that to provide positive uh, flow for water. That would be shoulder, considered shoulder maintenance. Mm -hmm. We don't put anything in resurfacing. So... The reason for that is that resurfacing typically is putting in a hot mix patch, but that's done after, say, a water break. So if there's a water break and we have to cut the road and dig down, repair the water break, when we put that back, when we do that hot mix patch to re, uh, resurface the road, that would be included in the cost of the water project. So it would be billed to the water department. So. Usually if we have to cut into a road, it's for a specific reason that can be billed, whether it be sanitary, uh, whether it be, you know, a drain, water, it would be allocated to that project and not considered a resurfacing. D2 grading. So that's anything that we do on the gravel road network uh, in West Elgin. So that could be work done by the graders grading, or it could be work done by the tractors with the drags that we typically use in the spring when the frost is coming out. Um, <clears throat> D3 is the, our dust suppressant. So that's putting the brine on. So you'll see there, there's very little under wages and machine time. Essentially what the wages and machine time underneath our D3 account is just uh, for that uh, operator or supervisor that makes contact with the uh, brine driver each day to direct them where they need to go. Um, so there's very little bit involved with that. The majority of that expense is obviously our contract um, for the supply and spread of dust suppressants in the municipality, and that's the 280000 D5 is gravel resurfacing, so um, that is our gravel contract for the year. That's the maintenance gravel that we have to put down on our gravel ro road network. So material costs, obviously, is the supply and, and spread of the gravel itself. And then wages and machine time there is... Um, when that gravel is placed on the road, uh, an operator with a grader obviously has to go out and level that gravel and shape it up before we can apply the dust suppressant. So that time that he spends with the grader, um, because he's grading that fresh gravel, um, that's not put towards grading, it's actually um, put towards our gravel resurfacing accounts. 
Then we get into our E1, E2, and E3 accounts. So those are the accounts that are set up for winter operations, snow removal. So E1 is uh, plowing snow, so strictly plowing snow. So that could be a truck that's just plowing on uh, the hard surface roads, maybe winging back the shoulders. Um, but that account is more used for the graders uh, that plow the gravel roads because that's all they're doing like in the wintertime when they go out. They're just strictly plowing snow. Um, and that could also be if uh, staff have to go into the villages and remove snow from the downtown if we have very heavy snowfall that can be included in that e1 account e2 is uh if they're just sanding or salting so if the trucks go out and, and all they have to do is apply material their wages and machine time would be captured there and that e2 material account is where you're going to see the actual material costs for winter maintenance so salt and sand um, so our salt and sand costs for the on the township roads uh, would be fifteen thousand for the year, and you'll see that when we go through the county budget, obviously the, a good portion of those costs do get allocated um, to the county. So our F safety account, that account will encompass um, anything from sign replacement and repair. Uh, guide rail repair, if there's an accident and there's guide rail damaged um, and they go out to fix it, it falls underneath of that line painting services for the year. Um, all of those things that are kind of a road uh, user safety item uh, would be captured underneath that F account. Drain repairs, so that would be the wages and machine time here would be anything that... Um, our staff have to do as far as drain repairs along the right of way, municipal right of ways. You'll see under the material, uh, that is a, a big number this year, 133,000. What that is, is that's, that is material costs for our staff that have to go out and make a small repair. So the material costs for that are very, are very small, but when the municipal drain, so when Tom uh, goes out and, and does work to a municipal drain, um, or they build a new drain, anytime that drain crosses a municipal road or touches that municipal right away, um, there's a cost associated. So we, as the landowner of the road, have to pay our share just like the landowner that owns the farm adjacent, right? So um, th those are the costs that are billed to the municipality for the work done on that municipal drain. Um, and there has been, and there was a lot of drain work done. Typically that stuff is built out the following year. So we have a fairly good idea. That's work. The majority of this is work that was done in 2023 that will be built out to us in 2024. So that's why, that's how we know that we need to increase that cost. Um, J shop there. So that's anytime that the staff are working in the yard or in the shop uh, on miscellaneous projects that don't fall into one of those other categories above. K, equipment repair, um, that is staff time to work on the equipment. So that could be um, oil changes, uh, services, um, minor repairs, rep any repair that we can do in-house that we don't have to send the equipment out for. Um, as you know, we, we do own, the municipality owns three gravel pits on Johnston Line. Um, so they are municipal B gravel pits. And uh, as such, we have, there are, there are a few things that we have to do each year as far as inspections and uh, rehabilitation that we have to do once we've done, once we're done taking gravel out of there. So there is uh, that our gravel pit uh, account is accounts for that. And then there's also, like I said before, we have to pay a licensing fee, just like a private contractor that owns a pit. So that material cost includes those licensing fees for our pits as well. The RP is our road patrol wages. So that is uh, obviously through uh, the maintenance standards, there is a requirement for us to inspect the roads on a, on a regular basis. And so that is for uh, staff time to do those inspections, to do those routine inspections through the whole course of the year. And then certainly in the winter time, if we're into a situation where we're having a storm and they're out checking for uh, winter road conditions, that would be included there as well. 
the wages um, admin. So our public works supervisor uh, certainly spends some time on the road uh, with staff and doing uh, operational things, but he also does spend a fair bit of time doing the paperwork, doing the office part of that. So we break his uh, wage out in a year. So part of his wage, the time he spends doing all of those operations above, his wage is allocated into those accounts, just like all the other operators. But for his administrative time, that's where it's captured here is under that wages admin. The next one there, which is the M miscellaneous. So like I said, up top where we had the under revenue, we had that $150,000 for roads. That's wages and machine time that's billed to other departments. So our public work staff are doing that work. So this is where it basically breaks it down. So 70,000 wages, 80,000 in machine time is what we expect our public works department to bill to other departments through the year. So that's where it's a, it balances. It's in at the top as revenue. It's out down here as an expense line item. The following accounts, uh, once we get past the miscellaneous, so we start there with the backhoe um, and we work down through, these are accounts that are created um, specifically for that certain piece of equipment within public works. So all of our equipment in public works that you can see here from the backhoe bulldozer through the graders, loaders, uh, pickups, are all of our tandem trucks, um, you know, the vacuum trailer, those all have account an account dedicated specifically to them. So that would be anything as far as repairs that we have to send that piece of equipment out for. It would be in the case of the licensed vehicles, it would be licensing costs. It would be insurance costs for those, for that piece of equipment for through the year. Um, so as you go down there, certainly, you know, we try and budget for an average, uh, you know, we try and budget for an average year as far as those expenses go. But if you look to last year, you can see there, there was a $40,000 uh, cost for the backhoe, which would, or sorry, the bulldozer, which was the second one down. And that was, you know, that was a transfer case that went out of that machine and it had to go in and it was fairly substantial repairs. So, you know, we certainly, uh, we don't anticipate anything like that, but um, as you can see last year, that is the case, but typically over the, you know, if you average all of them out, we tend to stay uh, underneath what we budget for, even, even having a, a larger expense on a certain piece of equipment like that. One thing in talking about that we can talk about right now with this respect to the equipment. So you'll see that every one of these operations, we have that second line is our machine time. So the we bill ourselves uh, at an OPS rate, so that's a provincial provincially designated rate that we use. We we bill ourselves. Um, so for the cost of that equipment, if it's say in a grader uh, is one hundred and twenty dollars an hour. So for every hour that we use that grader, we bill ourselves one hundred and twenty dollars, and that's how we come up with those machine time um, amounts in our operation codes. So what we do at the end of the year is we take the total amount that we've billed ourselves for the use of that equipment, and that's both municipal and county. Then we take what it's cost us to actually own and operate that equipment. So all of the expenses, licensing, repairs, everything, as well as our fuel costs, and we, we add all that up. So that's what it's actually cost us to operate that equipment over the course of the year. So what we've built ourselves typically is somewhere in that 180 to $220,000 range more than what we've actually spent to operate that equipment. So that difference, we transfer that difference to reserves and then our equipment purchases for public works are taken out of that reserve. So we've built a reserve up. So essentially we're, you know, we're billing ourselves more than what it actually costs to operate that piece of equipment. And with the hopes at the end of the year that we have that surplus that we can transfer to reserves. And then when we make a purchase such as a grader or a truck, or we replace one of these pieces of equipment, that money comes out of that reserve. So it doesn't hit the current year's budget. So we we're essentially saving for our own equipment replacement by doing that.
<clears throat> so then we've uh, we get into training um, twenty thousand, and that could be anything from uh, health and safety, such as first aid training. Uh, we do have a couple of operators taking uh, uh, the TJ Mahoney course at the Ontario Road School in Guelph. Um, that you know, so that it would be we we have a, a trainer coming in in two weeks to do book seven. So that's traffic control training for all staff, which they have to have in order to um, work along the roads. Uh, things that were kind of mandated to do like uh, chainsaw training on a regular basis, things of that nature all come out of that training account. And that would be staff's time to attend that training as well as training costs. So in the case of the trainer that's coming in in a couple of weeks, you know, that's uh, about $3,000 to provide that book seven training. So all that is included under into that training. Conferences, seminars and meetings, memberships and dues. Um, staff recruitment, health and safety. Uh, so that could be for uh, staff time to attend health and safety meetings, things of that nature. Uh, uniforms, so our public works uh, staff obviously have certain items like pants, shirts, and uh, coveralls that they are supplied with. So that is in there to cover the cost of uh, replacements or in some cases purchases of new uh, items for new employees. Hydro, gas, and water all pertain to the public works shop. So those are utility costs, insurance. That's our public works insurance cost for the year. Uh, building repairs and maintenance could be to any one of the buildings. So we do have the public works shop, we have the uh, back shop, and we have two uh, outbuildings that we house sand and salt in. So it could be any one of those uh, buildings that require repairs or maintenance. Uh, janitorial expenses are mostly uh, paper towels and things that are used in the public workshop. Phone and internet would be the, the uh, public works supervisor's company phone, as well as the uh, public works operators or all operations staff get a credit each year um, reimbursement for use of their private cell phone. And that's included in that. Tools would be small tools that are needed in the shop for uh, equipment repairs. Um, we don't have anything under equipment repair and maintenance because that's broke out in that K account up above in our operations accounts. Computer hardware could be replacement of, uh, you know, one of the tablets that they use to do their road patrols, things of that nature. Uh, or or office uh, equipment for the public work supervisor. Software and licenses, so our GPS system that we use for the municipal vehicles, we pay a license fee each year, the cost of that um, for any upgrades or support. Um, small amount for office supplies, um, same for other supplies. There's the, the odd thing that just doesn't fall uh, nicely into any one of those operations account would be included in other supplies. Um, billable, there should never be in there if uh, public works do work for, uh, a, uh, you know, for a rate payer or for bylaw or something like that, where that work is going to get billed out. That amount would go in there, but it should always, at the end of the year, it should always be billed out. So that would be zero. Um, our fuel, gas, diesel, and colored diesel, um, that's what would be spent in public works for the course of the year in those three categories. Transfer to reserves, so that is, uh, you know, anything that goes from public works into reserves. So that would be the, um, hopefully, the equipment, correct, Magda? Like equipment to that, that difference that I was telling you about that we're going to transfer in. And anything, any projects that get carried over that that money gets transferred and then to pull back out. And then uh, the transfer from reserves. So that would be, uh, you can, yeah. Okay, I'll take over from there. So transfer uh, from reserves consists of the transfer from reserves for the purchase of the greater $650,000. Tractor, uh, $10,000. Truck 11, $225,000. Um, there is a little bit of money left over from previous year for a stormwater uh, study. 
$19,610 that will be transferred from reserves uh, for um, additional um, study being done this year. Um, and Walker Road um, uh, construction, um, $15,000 and flooding incentive. Um, that hundred thousand dollars it shows on the road department, but that hundred thousand additional hundred thousand dollars is being transferred from uh, tax rate stabilization reserves. So there's, you know, transfer from reserves, but there is uh, different reserves that uh, that transfer from reserves is touching. Okay, um, the capital equipment over ten thousand, so that is uh, equipment replacement for the year, which is being offset obviously by our by our equipment reserve. So that is the grader at six fifty, uh, truck eleven at two twenty five, and the tractor at ten. Uh, under then under the capital items, Blacks Road reconstruction at one hundred and fifty. So that is for the portion of Blacks Road between. Queens Line and Highway 401 that was not part of the ICIP grant. Um, the 225, so the culvert replacement there, Blacks at Kintyre, that is the balance of the project. So that's completion of the surface treatment on Blacks Road from Highway 401 to Johnston Line. Um, 20,000 for the completion of the public work shed. So that's to install the heaters in that back shop that was refurbished a year ago. Uh, Walker Street reconstruction. So we're going to do the design and engineering. So Walker Street, uh, east of Mary Street here in West Lorne. Um, we're going to do design and, and um, engineering so that next year we can uh, do a complete uh, reconstruction on that section. So it'll be uh, new water, it'll be new storm drains, and it'll be new road. Uh, Stormwater management plan, like Magda said there, there's uh, the 100,000 that's being brought from the, the reserves uh, for that incentive project, as well as the 20 that's being carried over from last year. Culvert replacement. So we have a large culvert on one of the municipal drains on Silver Clay East of Furnival Road that's going to have to be replaced this spring. So there's money there for that. And then there's the uh, EV charging station. So if we are successful with the grant uh, this year, then we will be moving forward with that project of installing the EV charging stations. Any questions on the municipal side? So back is, go ahead. Through the chair. <clears throat> a number of your line items, if I look over the previous two years, we were budgeting less than we spent in 2023 and 2022. Is that because you know that we are not doing the work? Yeah, so through the chair, we look at each year, we look at where we're going to focus our attention on. Um, so some years, uh, some of those categories could be higher. And some years they could be lower. We've had, you know, we had a couple of years where we were very aggressive with removing dead trees. Uh, so those that, you know, in those years that uh, that category was quite high. Whereas, you know, now we've kind of got ahead of that and, you know, we're kind of focusing maybe on ditching or something else or safety uh, devices. So that's kind of where that up and down, it's not going to be that nice consistent, you know, where it's just a little increase every year, but that it stays consistent. Um, the other thing is uh, certainly with those E1, E2, and E3, so those winter accounts. Um, this year, I mean, certainly we're always going to have winter and you have to budget for something, but beans is how we are at this point in the process. So we're already at the tail end of winter, right? So I have a very good, I have a really good idea. We didn't spend a lot in January, February, March. Um, so, you know, even if we do get winter in November and December, we're going to be below an average year. Uh, so that I was comfortable, felt comfortable in reducing those two or those three categories um, for this year. Um, and I guess just the last one in F safety material every year, it looks like we are budgeting $20,000, but we have never spent more than four and a half. I'm just wondering why or if we can cut that one back uh well through the chair actually we had we had planned we had planned over the last couple of years to do an actual um uh sign inspection program we did implement it with the county signs last year 
Uh, so as part of the minimum maintenance standard requirements, we have to do sign reflectivity every year. And, uh, and then also with our asset management and bringing, putting everything into GIS now, um, the first year is the costly year. So what we'll do is uh, we'll have a third party, a contractor come in and go around basically in GPS, all of the signs and create that database. And then at the same time, they do the reflectivity. So there's a special reflectometer that they use. Um, they're a very, very expensive piece of equipment. And it's more cost effective to have that done by a, by a contractor versus doing it in-house. So that is planned to go this year. We're hoping, um, we're trying to convince Elgin County to uh, put out a joint tender for all the municipalities because sign reflectivity is something that we all have to do. So uh, with we're hoping that if the county um, takes the initiative and puts that contract out, we might be able to secure some um, better pricing as far as a per sign cost. Any other questions from council? No, nope, not seeing any. I have one. Um, we were to purchase a picker. I don't see that in a line item. I called a picker. I don't know what it's really called. To cherry, picker. cherry picker, yeah. Oh, the lift. The lift, yeah. We Where have that on the line item. Last year we purchased. Yeah. Would it not be in a line item in here for expenses or anything? Oh, for I don't I suppose there hasn't been a um We'll have to set up an equipment. You're talking about the equipment accounts. You're not talking about the purchase, but you're talking about yeah. an account where where would it be in this budget? Like you've got like um trucks and that and any expenses on it. So I just assumed there'd be a line because yeah. it is so, an asset yeah. that there'd be a line for it. In so the budget. we'll have to yeah, we'll have to create a line item in there. I wouldn't okay. I wouldn't expect any costs and be because it's not a licensed piece of equipment, we're not paying okay. license fees or anything like that on it. And certainly being brand new, it's under warranty. So anything, if there was something that was done to it this year, would be all covered under warranty anyways. But mm -hmm. that's a good catch. It's we'll, we'll have so to create a... Going forward, we'll have a line item though? Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank yep. you. Not seeing anything else. We're going to... Are you all done with roads then? With municipal roads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> So uh, under the county roads, I'll just highlight a couple things, because like I said, if you look at the two budgets, both municipal and county, they are very similar. The difference with the county here is you'll see the very first line item there is revenue. So that's Elgin County. So that is the money that Elgin County pays West Elgin each year to maintain uh, their road network within our municipality. And that is a set amount. Um, so if we have a good year and we're able to um, provide the service and we don't spend that 555,000, then we transfer the balance of that money to reserves. Um, if we have a horrible winter and we have to spend a lot, um, really winter is one of the big um, unknowns when you're setting this budget. There's times where we've gone over that slightly, but the, the county says on a good year, we don't ask for it back on a bad year, we're not gonna give you any extra. So that's why we started that reserve fund. So we we take that leftover, if we underspend in a year, we put that towards reserves. So for a year that we might be over, such as a harsh winter, that we have the money to cover that cost. And then as you work down there, you'll see like the bridges, the mowing, all of those accounts um, as you work down, mirror uh, what we have on the municipal side. The ones that are missing are the gravel accounts because certainly the county doesn't have any gravel roads that we maintain. So we don't have to worry about having accounts for that. But as you see, as you get down here to the winter accounts, so those E1, E2 and E3 accounts, um, if you remember, I think we were like 12,000 or 13,000 for material costs on the municipal side. Um, if you look at E2 materials here, we're at 60,000 and that's rel and that's relatively low. That's, you know, um, compared to some years, uh, with the cost of the sand and the salt for our county road networks. Um, same thing goes for safety. So that's, uh, sign repair, guide rail repair. You'll notice under safety material there, that's a fairly large number there, the 80,000. But the line painting that we have done is uh, 
primarily all county roads, our county road network. So that's where that line painting falls in. Um, we don't have much in the way of uh, drain work that we do. Um, our road patrol wages here um, are quite a bit higher than municipal, and that's for two reasons. So the first reason is our road, our county road network are a higher class of road, so they have to be patrolled routinely more frequently. So um, we patrol county roads once every seven days, whereas municipal roads, depending on the class, are once every 14 or once every 30 days. Um, so that is, uh, you know, routine as far as routine inspection goes that's uh, quite a bit of an added cost and then also in the winter time the majority of our uh, winter patrolling that the operators do looking for uh, adverse road conditions that all gets billed to the county as well and then uh, you'll see there that administrative overhead is the twenty-seven thousand. we're showing it as an expense on the county side and then it goes to revenue on our municipal side and then this year's a little different. Typically in the past, uh, we've always tried to um, to budget back to zero. And this year with the winter being so light and with our winter accounts being uh, really low compared to normal, I didn't feel that that was uh, good. So I'm actually showing this year a transfer to reserves of 55000 So that's what we're expecting to have um, at the end of the year. Uh, you know, unless something really freakish happens as far as winter in November and December. Any questions about uh, county roads? All right, not seeing any. We'll take a 10 minute comfort break then. For now. Okay, hey, um, next department is Service Ontario. So uh, we're not expecting anything unusual at this point. Um, revenue is always, uh, so basically the revenue is based on on uh, funding from, uh, from the province as well as a commission um, and it's based on the number of customers um, we have in our office, so driver's license, renewals, and health, health cards, as well as hunting license commission. Uh, miscellaneous revenue is just for the sale of um, uh, driver's booklets, and that goes with um, other expense, uh, which we have enough inventory for this year, so we're not planning uh, um, uh, refurbish, uh, re um, restocking our inventory wages um, and uh, pay payroll benefits um, are accounted for as well as um, OMER's expense. So uh, for this year, we are predicting a deficit of uh, approximately $1,000. Are there any questions for Service Ontario? Okay, seeing none. We're going to move on to four counties transit. So this um, budget was already presented to uh, four counties uh, committee uh, board, and it has been approved. Um, just uh, quickly, if I may review, so grants from other municipality is the contributions that um, that we receive um, at the end of the year from. Um, um, uh, joint municipalities such as uh, Southwest Middlesex, Chatham, Kent, um, and Newbury uh, um, for their residents using our transit services. And that contribution is uh, based on the ridership numbers. And at the end of the day, when the level of deficit is calculated, um, we uh, distribute that deficit accordingly. Um, the uh, positive number, $6,800, unfortunately was not approved by the board, but had to be added as this would be additional expense. This is um, um, a funding that we received back in uh, 2021, uh, COVID-related. Um, 
as you know, um, our um, transit transportation is uh, specialized transit. And uh, during COVID, uh, there was a period of time where we had to shut down services because it was just um, um, not worth um, um, staying in service as there was there was no need, uh, there was no interest in our community. So we, uh, when we shut down services, there is, um, you know, uh, favorable. Um, um, there was a, a, a um, there was no expenses allocated during that time. So uh, I believe the um, in 2020, uh, 2021, the service were services were shut down for um, um, uh, seven months. So we had significant savings during that time as there was no uh, wages or and very limited revenue that we um, received from our customers um um you know didn't really affect us so unfortunately that six thousand dollars the remaining balance um, of um, uh, safe restart grant had to be returned and it's being uh, incorporated in transit budget Bus trip fees, um, this is the uh, revenue that we generate uh, for the ridership from the ridership of the bus. And occasionally uh, we have special trips. Um, uh, there is a private uh, rentals of the bus that are being charged hourly rate um, and uh, mileage for, um, for, uh, for that service. Wages um, reflect uh, two part-time bar bus drivers and with payroll benefits. Um, $1,000 uh, is um, um, allocated for training. Um, there is um, the insurance company um, this year um, is very strict in, when it comes to um, uh, bus drivers, um, uh, uh, drivers dealing with the public. Um, we have to, uh, there is a cost associated with it. They are required to uh, take a driving assessment uh, once, a, once a year, and that driving assessment has to be forwarded to uh, our insurance company on annual basis. So this will be implemented as of this year. Actually, this was implemented as of last year. Um, insurance, um, approximately $5,000 phone and internet. So this is the cost of um, landline at the hospital that we contributing to uh, for uh, day programming and, and reservations uh, for the bus, as well as cell phone for the bus drivers. Um, uh, and legal, uh, just in case that we usually allocate a thousand dollars in case there is a, there is an issue. Um, gas and fuel, we're allocating $15,000 um, based on uh, ridership numbers. Um, our uh, transit bus is getting more and more popular. There is um, um, uh, uh, areas that are currently are not part of the of our uh, bus transportation are interested in our services. So um, hopefully uh, we can um, explore further um, um, ventures, uh, revenue ventures with them. Um, repairs and maintenance, it's a brand new bus. We don't expect anything major um, besides um, regular oil changes. And transfers uh, to reserves. So our um, reserve account for the purchase of a new bus is um, pretty much depleted. So at the board, made the decision that um, despite of the levels of deficit, um, we will be allocating additional $5,000 uh, towards the purchase of the new bus every year. So that would leave uh, our West Elgin deficit at uh, $15,522. Are there any questions? And I'm gonna turn it over to Lee. 
through the chair. Uh, so we'll go on to street lights. Uh, that one's fairly straightforward. We have hydro for our street lights, uh, any repair and maintenance costs that we have to do to the system throughout the course of the year, and then equipment purchase. So if we have to buy a new support arm or a new head, that would all fall underneath equipment purchase. So that's the 49500 for the year. Um, under sidewalks, so uh, we do have the same type of thing there that you saw in public works. So we have a materials, a machine time, and a wages for sidewalks. So materials and machine time are essentially for uh, uh, winter. All three of these, the majority of this is for uh, the work that's done by our uh, um recreation staff cleaning the sidewalks uh, during the winter time, but there'd also be a small amount in here for the annual inspections that we do of the sidewalks. And then if we have to grind any trip hazards, um, anything that's done by our staff in the summer months would fall under that as well. And then we have the capital there. So uh, we're planning capital work this year of 150,000, but 100,000 of that is coming from reserves. The next one is landfill. Um, so at the top there, you'll see uh, the revenue accounts. First one is refrigerant fees. So that's the money that we collect um, for uh, removing refrigerant from units that come in that still have it in. Tipping fees, uh, that's the money that uh, we charge for people that come in that have uh, over the prescribed limit. So if they have a pickup load, if it's a commercial load, like a truck, a larger truck or a or a, a, a bin, that's the cost that's associated with that, or large items like a couch or something like that that we charge for. Um, that's all included in tipping fees into our landfill. London salvage is, um, so we do recycle anything that comes into the transfer site that's scrap metal. That all gets placed into bins, and then when those bins are full, they're taken to uh, London and disposed of and we receive the revenue for that money as well. Um, we used to the Stewardship Ontario and the MRF fees um, before the transition to producer led recycling responsibility. Um, we used to get money each year from Stewardship Ontario to help offset the cost of our recycling program that was done through um, the data call and then we, we, because we were a member of the London MRF, um, we had to pay a portion of the expenses to operate the facility, but we also got a portion of the revenue. Um, now, after 20, July of 2023, once we transferred, um, we no longer receive any money from Stewardship Ontario. Uh, we no longer receive money from the MRF, from the City of London, because they don't operate that anymore. Um, but we don't have the expenses associated with that as well. So now uh, through CMO, um, we receive money uh, every month because we opted to stay on as the contractor for recycling during the transition period of 2023, 2024, and 2025. Um, we are being paid by RLG uh, each month based on the number of homes that we're collecting, based on the um, our transfer site, the recycling that we collect at our transfer site and the public education stuff that we do for recycling. We receive a monthly, um, we send them an invoice and receive amount monthly. And then that goes towards offsetting the cost of our recycling collection. So that will take place for the next uh, two years. So 24 and 25. Then at the end of 2025, it will move to full producer uh, responsible and we the municipality of West Elgin will no longer have anything to do with recycling so we won't be receiving funds but we won't be paying for that recycling expense um, <clears throat> the recycling expense uh, the first line item in the expenses that's for uh, recycling from our transfer site so that's for collection of the recycling at the transfer site and also hauling that uh, material to London to the material recovery facility. Um, there we don't, you see, we don't have those MRF uh, expenses anymore. Our share of operating costs at the London MRF. 
uh, hazardous waste day, uh, we can rename that to better reflect what we do now. We don't offer hazardous waste day in West Elgin anymore, but we are a member of the St. Thomas facility. So West Elgin residents are allowed to go in there twice a week uh, and take anything that's considered uh, hazardous material and dispose of it at that site at no cost. So we pay an annual fee to be a member of that. Uh, free on removal is just the offset cost. So that's having the material removed from those units that come into the landfill. The next two are your garbage and recycling. So that is contract cost. That's what we pay waste connections annually to pick up all of the curbside collection for garbage and all of the curbside collection for recycling. Um, Wages and all the associated expenses there are for the transfer site attendant. Um, training expense, so that is for our attendant at the transfer site, and as well as uh, we do have to keep up on training. There are courses offered through SWANA that are for basic landfill operations and safety. So for our public work staff that work at the landfill on a regular basis, we do provide that training for them as well. Taxes for the site, uh, janitorial, um, there is a portage on at the landfill and for customers and staff to use when they're working there. And, and so we do get that clean and that's the cost of having the company come in and clean that unit. Um, materials could be, uh, you know, locks, padlocks, things like that, small items that they need uh, at the landfill. Grounds maintenance is that 70,000 is wages and machine time for public work staff that are doing work at the landfill. So covering uh, garbage, um, all of those things associated with keeping the landfill operating that are outside of the, uh, that are outside of the responsibility of the attendant. Uh, green lane disposal is that's what we pay in tipping fees for the garbage that is collected curbside in West Elgin. Anything that's collected curbside goes to Green Lane Landfill and it's disposed of. So that's what we pay for tipping fees in a year there. Contracts and agreements, that's uh, the monitoring. So uh, Blue Metric that does the environmental monitoring at our landfill. Uh, I believe this year it's 39,000 and change that we will pay for that service from them. Equipment maintenance, equipment purchase, there again, it's just uh, small items like uh, the generator that we have out there to provide hydro when the attendant's there, things like that. Um, small things, office supplies, a lot of that is uh, um, having the uh, receipts made up. So when he's actually charging for certain things, he's writing those receipts out to give to people, uh, things of that nature. Um Advertising expense is uh, sending out the uh, yearly uh, garbage and recycling collection calendar that goes out every uh, November for the beginning of the new year. Uh, under contracted services, there's 20,000 there this year. So we have this year we have to um, update our design and operating report. Uh, that's one of the conditions of our ECA. Um, so Blue Metric has provided uh, two things, actually. So an update to our design and operations report and an update, uh, an ECA amendment. Um, so Blue Metric has provided a, a vote uh, to do both of those projects. So that would be over and above what their annual monitoring would be. So that falls under contracted services. So that gives us a, a total of 553,493. So to answer Councillor Denning's uh, question from earlier on, when we say landfill, when you see landfill as that line item in that uh, uh, first page, landfill cost really is not just the cost of operating our own municipal landfill. That is really everything to do with environmental services. So the big one there, obviously, as you can see, is the collection costs that we pay waste connections every year for curbside collection. Any questions from Council on that? Councillor Statham? Through the chair, just a quick question, Lee. Um, do we have any idea what kind of uh, lifetime lifespan uh, is remaining for the landfill facility? Um, yeah. So uh, right now, Blue Metric is uh, right now Blue Metric is estimating approximately fifteen to twenty years, but they're just completing their um, annual report for twenty twenty three, and when that's done, uh, we will have uh, Saranifum. Blue Metric will be coming to council to present a report to you on that. So 
that will be a good question for her when she comes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And by then we'll know if we're getting into different kind of collections to see other communities are getting into the large bins that the uh, truck goes and just picks it up. Yeah. Councilor Denning. Thank you. And uh, through the chair. So it's it's clearly a, a significant expense for our municipality to operate this landfill. Um, and, uh, you know, on, on the on the foot of the fact that we're having this um, assessment done shortly, I won't waste too much time, but just a couple thoughts with regards to um, wages at our landfill, um, our tipping fees, uh, the, the revenue we bring in does not cover the wages of the attendant there. I think that's something we should look at um, at the very least, um, ensuring that the tipping fees that we are generating at our landfill are covering the costs of the uh, staff member that's there. Uh, and I recognize that that would increase costs. And the other thing I think that would be worth considering is um, the idea of bag tags and, and not necessarily a bag tag required for every bag of garbage, but perhaps a bag tag for the second piece of garbage each week to, um, again, try to close that gap of of cost associated with operating this landfill, but also to encourage folks to be perhaps a little more mindful about how much garbage they're putting out at the curb each week to help expand the life expectancy of our landfill. These are a couple of thoughts that, that I wanted to share. Any other questions about the landfill? Okay, we'll move on to cemeteries. So cemeteries, uh, simply there's a thousand dollars in there. Our public uh, parks and recreation da staff uh, do cut a small amount of grass at one of the cemeteries. And that's what that uh, money is, wages transferred in is put in there to include. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now we'll go on to arena. Okay, arena. So this budget's already been uh, obviously seen and approved by the arena board. So we'll run through it here. Um, so the in the, underneath the revenue, there you'll see uh, grants from Dutton Dunwich. So that's the money that we receive from Dutton Dunwich to help uh, pay for the operating costs of the arena. Ice rental uh, certainly is the amount that we get through rental of the ice uh, when it's in. Sign rentals, that's the advertising signs uh, that are around the arena that we uh, charge for each year. There's a cost associated with having those signs in. Um, public skating, so we've been very fortunate to, we've been able to uh, have a lot of those public skates sponsored, uh, which certainly helps. And then the skate sharpening is uh, the amount that's charged. So we expect a slight increase because of the cost uh, or the skate sharpening is going to go up uh, in the new year <clears throat> or with the new season, sorry. On the expense side, uh, there's training. So uh, we had one of our new operators took the basic refrigeration training through uh, ORFA. Um, so there is training involved with uh, the operation of the arena itself that our staff have to have. Um, <clears throat> wages transferred in is our parks and recreation staff, uh, both full-time and the part-time seasonal employees that work at the arena in the winter. That's their cost. Membership and dues would be like our ORFA membership. A, a portion of that gets allocated to the arena, health and safety, uniforms. So we typically, um, all of these types of accounts, um, we look at what we spend on uh, our parks and recreation department through the year. And then a, a portion of that gets allocated to the arena because they do spend a fair amount of time there. Hydro, gas, um, all of our utilities, water uh, for the arena, insurance, um, building repairs and maintenance. Uh, we're not expecting anything uh, major. Hopefully we're, we're focused on trying to, uh, get uh, things sorted out for the renovations that are going to happen. Janitorial supplies. So that's all your toilet paper and different things that they use garbage bags and things like that. Uh, administration expense, we charge to the arena for the operation contracts and agreements. Um, there's a couple things that we get on a regular basis at the arena for the refrigeration stuff that we have to have contract for um, phone and internet over at the arena tools 
equipment maintenance that could be that equipment maintenance could be like um we the uh, dehumidification system is getting older so there is uh, repairs that are required to keep up on that um certain things like that that would go under equipment maintenance hvac things of that nature um equipment purchases uh, we don't expect anything uh major with that um, the fuel, the gas there, so that's the, for the Zamboni unit that's used to clean the ice surface. And then uh, transfer to reserves. And then finally, the floor scrubber at the bottom as a capital item. Um, and that gives us our 126506 there. All right, thank you, Councillor Bacchus. Through the chair, I noticed on the Dutton Dunwich, every year we seem to budget an amount, but they are paying us less. Can you explain to me why that is? Oh, I can explain that. Okay, so because the reason why they are paying us less is because when we estimate um, their portion, their shared uh, portion, um, it's based on budget. Usually uh, the actuals, um, uh, as you can see, like last year, typically we generated a lot more revenue than we anticipated. So the level of um, deficit was much lower and therefore their portion of um, deficit, uh, share of deficit is lower. So it's a percentage. It is yes. a percentage, okay. yes. You. Any other questions for the arena? Okay, we'll move along to Parks and Rec to Marina. Yep, so we'll get into the Parks and Recreation now. And the first one here is down at the Marina. Um, so you'll see this year, uh, we're budgeting a $5,000 um, from the Yacht Club, their share of the deficit for uh, the fish clean station. Then wages transferred in. So each one of these uh, different Parks and Recreation um, Groupings will have that wages transferred in. So when you see that, that is the money that's being allocated for our parks and recreation staff towards this certain thing. So we're budgeting 8102 for wages for the marina. Hydro and water um, is and sewage expense are all the utility costs down there. Uh, fish clean station, we're budgeting six thousand dollars, and that's primarily for uh, emptying the tank. <clears throat> property taxes, uh, building repairs and maintenance. So that our built, as far as the Marina goes, our buildings down there are uh, the washrooms and um, and the fish cleaning station, but uh, the washrooms are in need of uh, new taps this year. So there'll be an expense uh, as far as that's concerned. So that's where the $5,000 is coming in. And then janitorial supplies for in the washroom, grounds maintenance is, uh, <clears throat> what um, for public work staff that would work down there and then uh, transfer to reserves. So we're looking at putting another $50,000 into reserves this year. The, the footbridge going across to the municipal beach is in need of replacement. Um, we are currently, uh, it is going to be a, a, a rather large expense if we, if we do it properly and put in a steel bridge that's going to last a long time, um, then the, the bridge itself, the estimates that we've received is approximately 120,000 for the bridge. And then the, the, you know, actually setting it in place would be more than that. So we're trying to set some money aside. We're, we're keeping the current bridge um, safe as far as inspecting it, making sure that any boards that look like they are getting, starting to get a little bit, um, uh, rotten are being replaced and hopefully get us through another year until we have the money set aside that we can actually um, put in a new bridge there. So that's uh, Marina. Any questions there? <clears throat> so under programming um, on the revenue side, so we do bill the soccer um, for so much per player for the use of the fields. That's the revenue generated there. Um, baseball, same thing, uh, people renting the, the ball diamonds to use for, uh, a certain day or for a season that money's captured there. 
hanging basket donations. So there's 40 hanging baskets uh, between Rodney and West Lorne. Um, to sponsor a basket is $100 a basket. So that's where the $4,000 comes from. We have all the baskets uh, sponsored. Um, and then municipal run programs. So that's the revenue generated from things like uh, pickleball, shuffleboard, all of those programs that we're operating under, under the municipality uh, and that we're charging that uh, program fee for. On the flip side, uh, for municipal programs, that would be any equipment or anything that we need in the facilities in order to um, carry out those programs that would be that under that expense. Um, and then we have the outdoor volleyball courts in both Rodney and West Lorne, uh, the soccer diamond or di diamonds, the soccer fields at Miller Park in West Lorne. Um, that majority of that is uh, the paint that they use to paint the lines each year for the soccer. Um, baseball, mm -hmm. tennis, basketball, we've included just a nominal amount in there for each, just in case there's uh, something that we need in order to facilitate those programs. Uh, the lawn bowling is money that we would spend on the facility itself, but we don't anticipate anything major this year. Um, playground equipment, uh, the majority of that is the annual inspection that we would do. Um, we each year we have the play, all the playground equipment in the municipality inspected by third party to make sure that it's safe. Splash pad. <clears throat> um, the majority of that is water. So about $8,500 of that amount of that $10,000 is water because our splash pad goes directly to drain. It's not recycled water. So um, the water that goes through is metered and we bill ourselves accordingly. And then it, there needs to be a, a new control module put on this spring before we open. So that would be the remaining cost there for the splash pad. Flower baskets, um, budgeted $3,000. I, I suspect it will be slightly less than that. Um, we did purchase the baskets two years ago and they are in good shape. So we recycle, we reuse the baskets. Um, so that would be the cost. We've already, we had taken the baskets back in the fall. They've already been planted. And then, so that's the cost of actually planting the flowers in those baskets, in those hanging baskets. Um, holiday parade. So that $5,000, that used to be for the two uh, Christmas parades in Rodney and West Lorne. And then uh, each one received up to $2,500. Um for hosting those events or holding those events. So now um, that is the same. So the Optimist Club and West Lorne are provided 2,500, uh, up to 2,500 with receipts for the Santa Claus Parade in West Lorne. And the Night Market Committee in Rodney um, has the same ability to access up to $2,500 for putting on the Night Market. Canada Day celebrations, we budgeted $7,500 for that. Um, the Rodney Fair each year, we budget $10,000. Um, primarily, the majority of that is bleacher rentals and uh, portable washrooms for the event. The wages transferred in. Um, so this one is wages of our parks and recreation staff. Uh, our operations staff that are uh, lining the soccer fields, um, dragging the ball diamonds, um, you know, rototilling the sand at the volleyball courts. But this is also where the remaining two thirds of the admin assistant position falls in um, under that programming, under this programming heading. So that's where the 70,000 comes from. And then insurance, and then the only capital purchase that we're making this year under programming is we need a new line painter for the soccer fields. Any questions on programming? Councilor Jenning? Thank you, through the Chair. The, the money for the pickleball court that's already been set aside and uh, where we took the playground equipment out of the, the uh, Miller Park. Um, yep. So through the chair, um, we don't have the, we have been setting money aside for that project. We applied to a grant recently um, for that. You're talking about the multi-use pad. Yes. Okay. 
So we've applied for a grant for that. Um, the catch there is that we can't do anything until we find out if we've been successful for the grant. And we won't find that out till July or August. Right, Terry? Um, so we haven't included it here. Um, we're going to wait and we'll see how we make out with the grant and then we'll move forward with that. Um, if it's something that, you know, if we are successful with the grant and it's something that we can do some of the work yet this year, obviously we would do that. Um, and if we aren't successful with, but we really can't do anything until we find out. Yep. Thank you. But it, it has, it still is, it's still being planned for. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move on to rec center. Rec, the rec center, yeah. Yep. Um, so the revenue is obviously rentals of the rec center um, space, that first line item at 10,000. Uh, wages transferred in is our public work staff that go there and clean the floors and uh, washrooms, et cetera. Uh, memberships and dues, that's our SOCAN. So we have to be licensed to be able to play music or play music or show videos there at the rec center. So that's what that membership is for. Um, hydro, gas, water is our utility costs, um, building repairs and maintenance. We do have at the east end of the building um, where the, the HVAC system for the main part of the rec center sits outside. There's two big HVAC systems at the east end of the building and they need some uh, the insulation around those HVAC systems has to be uh, replaced this year. So we've set some money aside for that. But short of that, we don't expect anything major with the building itself. Um, janitorial, that's uh, material costs, garbage bags, things of that nature. Um, ground maintenance is very small. Uh, that could be public or parks and rec staff planting flowers in the flower bed out in front of the rec center. Phone and internet there. Equipment maintenance, uh, equipment purchase are all small items. Um, so the big one here is uh, ceiling replacement. So the ceiling in the rec center, as we talked about in the Capitol back a month or so ago, um, is in need of replacement. It is cracking. Um, it's not a it's not a safety concern. It's not going to fall down, but it, it is starting to look quite disheveled. And uh, there, the uh, insulation above that ceiling um, is in need of replacement as well. So when that ceiling gets replaced, it'll be new vapor barrier, new insulation. So it'll be, uh, it'll make the building more efficient. Um, but certainly it is a big project because of all the HVAC and the lighting and everything that's in there that has to come down in order to facilitate the replacement. So there's a hundred thousand is what we've been, uh, is the estimate that we've received to do that work. Any questions in the recreation center, Michelle? For uh, it to insurance for both the rec center and the pool, where do we associate that cost? Just out of curiosity. Under it's just under parks operations. Is so the whole thing. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. See you no know, other questions. Move on to the pool then. So in the pool. Um the uh, so the first line item there is revenue. So that could be for uh, the sponsored swims. Uh, it could be for swimming lessons. Any revenue received to do with the pool. Uh, wages. Now the wages here. This is for our six guards for the season, and then all the associated like their CBP, EI, WSIB uh, training expense. A portion of that is training for our full time park staff. So there is a CPO course, certified pool operator course that's offered that, uh, you know, teaches them the basics on looking after a pool of a uh, commercial pool of that nature. Um, but then there's also a portion of that we, we do offer our guards um, if they have to take uh, research in between uh, pool seasons in order to keep their certification valid, we do offer to pay 50% of that expense um, so that they have that so that it's available. So they're able to work the following season. The wages transferred in is our park staff that go to the pool each day and take the samples and um, open it, close it, all of those things. Um, the mileage would be uh, for that operator if they take that CPO course. Typically, it's not offered local. They have to travel for that. Um, health and safety is small items like um, uh, water, uh, 
for for guarding staff things of that nature uniforms obviously they have to have uh the light guarding uniforms that they wear around the pool when they're on duty hydro gas and water utility costs building maintenance we don't expect anything uh major this year pool maintenance um that is primarily for uh we do have a an outside company that comes in every season and they and they close the pool and winterize it that's a very fairly specialized operation um so that is included in that cost <clears throat> contracts and agreements uh that's mainly for our chemicals that we use like the chlorine and and such that we use at the pool um we have a, a contract with a supplier that delivers that product in um, as required. The pool chemical, sorry. Um, yeah, phone and internet at the pool. Uh, there's the chemical costs themselves for the purchase of the chemical. Equipment purchase, um, we are looking at uh, last year we had, uh, the, the pool has two heaters. Uh, that maintain the temperature and uh, both of those heaters were original to when the pool was built last year one of those heaters um, failed on us and we had to replace it uh, at actually it was just a week or two after the start of the season um, the other heater is the same age and in the same condition although it did get us through the balance of last season um, we're looking at being proactive and replacing that heater um, so that's where that would go office supplies advertising other supplies all minor stuff that the guards would use in the office up at the at the pool house and then uh, we're looking at transferring another fifty thousand. we are saving up for a line of replacement at the pool any questions about the pool budget not seeing any we'll move on to the parks and rec operations so parks and recreation on the operation side. Um, so under revenue, we've got pavilion rentals. There's a small amount there for the rental of the pavilions each season, uh, rental of the scout hall uh, facility, and then uh, donations. So that this one has been created for, this is Rodney, correct? Magda? Yep. So donations for the new playground equipment that is being planned for uh, at the Rodney Park. Um, <clears throat> under expenses, uh, Joe's Bush, you'll see that there's a, a larger cost here this year. So we are actually, uh, we, there are a couple trees in Joe's Bush that, uh, need to come out. So we are looking at getting a contractor in, um, to do some work over and above what the Rodney Kiwanis do on a volunteer basis throughout the course of the season. The old jail, uh, we don't expect anything there. Um, the scout hall, that 5,000 includes um, kind of everything. So that's all the utility costs and anything associated with the operation of the scout hall for the season. Um, flower baskets, that's in programming now. That doesn't show up under the operations. Um, training, so that's training for parks and rec staff, anything to do with um, the operation side of it. And that also could be like training as far as the things that they do on an annual basis, like their first aid and stuff. Wages transferred in is, uh, that is our, our full-time uh, park staff, as well as the summer students um, that work from May to August. Um, memberships and dues, uh, that's the balance of that. Most of that is our ORFA, so Ontario Recreational Facility Association. That's our membership to that. Health and safety uh, uniforms, like I said, we those are ones that we typically split that up and we share that with the arena. Hydro, gas, and water, those utility costs are for the parks shop located on Chestnut Street. Um, there's the insurance amount uh, for Councillor Navakis. That is That includes all parks and recreation items. Building repair and maintenance, that that is specific to the uh, park shop on Chestnut. Uh, janitorial is uh, mostly garbage bags, which would be used for garbages in the downtowns, uh, throughout the parks, things like that, um, the work that they're doing. Um, grounds maintenance is work that they're doing out in the park. Uh, phone and internet, uh, any small tool items that they may need. 
um, equipment purchase. We don't expect anything major. There's uh, a couple of weed eaters that need to be replaced this year. So um, small tools like that. Um, office supplies, other supplies. Um, there you see the recreation master plan at 80. Uh, so the gas, so that's for parks and recreation vehicles. Um, any maintenance that's done to those three vehicles that are operated, um, as well as the fuel that goes into the uh, non-licensed equipment. And then um, transfer to and from reserves. And then in the parks and recreation capital budget, we do have the replacement of a pickup this year. Questions on that, Councilor Novakis? Through the chair. Hear me out. What if we don't do the rec plan this year? It doesn't seem in any of this budget, there is a lot of areas for us to be saving or cutting. We have the review of our building fees. We have the water and both of those effectively are going to make the municipality money. And at this time, I don't know how a, a rec plan will do that. And it does look like that we're making small gains in revenue across all of our rec as we are, we have a rec committee who's kind of got started. We have a possible new committee with Dutton and West Elgin. I'm just wondering if we can take it out this year. Anyone have thoughts on that? Not saying anything. Councilor Denning? Subject to staff's thoughts on that, I think that's a great consideration. Through the chair, um, I'm okay deferring it to the next chair. The reason why it was put back in the budget was because it aligns with our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. So I had to put it, I had to include it in the budget, but um, we're certainly okay deferring it to the next chair. Anything else on that? Okay, so we can make that change, it'd be great. We'll move on to libraries. Yeah, so Rodney Library, uh, so we receive rent from uh, County of Elgin. Uh, we're estimating roughly $25,000 uh, this year. Um, very minimal building expenses, um, utilities, and um, luckily uh, the building is in good shape. There is not a lot of uh, repair and maintenance on it. However, you know, um, uh, we always uh, budget uh, $5,000 in case uh, there is an issue with the building. And janitorial, so basically those are uh, cleaning uh, services uh, that Gerald's janitorial is providing us. And uh, so there is a surplus of uh, just under $9,000. Um, I suggest that that surplus um, goes to reserves and the reason for it is that uh, li Rodney Library building is aging and down the road there is going to be um, there is going to be a cost associated with um, you know renovations so instead of um, uh, you know allocating it to a capital budget I think that particular surplus should be transferred to reserves just like we did last year. So so that department, once we uh, transfer sur uh, surplus to reserves, um, uh, it will net, net it down to zero. As for uh, West Lorne Library, uh, again, we are receiving income from County of Elgin, $31,395. As, as you know, West Elgin Support Services no longer um, um, rent uh, their office space. We have um, we have um, okay um, part time uh, rentals, occasional rentals. Uh, we're hoping um, uh, you know to finish the year with approximately ten thousand dollars in revenue. Um, and as for expenses. Um, uh, so wages transfer in um, allocation of our municipal um, staff checking on the building, uh, doing small repairs, utilities, 
um, insurance and uh, building repairs and maintenance. So as you know, we have leaky roof, so we have to uh, take care of that issue this year. Um, and then, you know, because um, it was a roof, so there is uh, some damage on the inside. So that $7,500 should cover um, any kind of uh, repairs on the inside and the roof. Um, so that being said, hoping uh, with the revenue estimated at $10,000, we should see a small surplus of $2,500 at the end of the year. Thank you for that. Any questions uh, regarding libraries? Councilor Zatham? Uh, through the chair, just a quick one. I noticed that there's no uh, wages transferred in for the Rodney Library. Are they both accrued under the same, like they're both under uh, West Lorne? No, um, there is a very limited um, work that our um, operators um, do at Rodney Library. Um, I, I think it would be wise probably to allocate uh, wages if um, it's just, it has never been done, but th that's a good, very good point and we can, um, we can set that up. Thank you. This isn't totally library related, but the beautiful tree in front of the Rodney Library, I get asked all the time, what's its lifespan? I'm assuming it's near its end. Okay, so this year? Yeah, it's it's getting close. Oh. People love that tree, <laughs> but you know. Okay, that's all I have. Are, are, you, are you talking about the spruce tree that's in front of the that big? Uh, yeah. Yep. I, I thought it looked okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I get asked all the time. Okay, perfect. If there's no other questions about uh, libraries or trees, um, I'll go on to planning. Okay, um, so as of uh, 20, uh, July of 2022, we are obtaining planning services from Oakview Planning. Um, there is, uh, we don't no longer have an employee. We no longer um, uh, have a staff, a planner on staff. So uh, planning fees, obviously, that's the revenue we generate from uh, planning, planning applications. As far as expenses, so uh, with um, um, having an agreement with a planner um, that comes to the office uh, once a week, we, uh, we pay mileage um, as well as um, 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 uh, fees associated with the services, which is $72,000. Um, the five thousand dollars that you see for an official plan, there is uh, there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done. Last year we uh, finished the year eighteen thousand dollars. That money was coming from the reserve, so we transferred eighteen. There is a little bit of money left in our reserve, so uh, that will cover the cost of uh, of the extra cost. And then uh, cost of advertising. So uh, we're. Um, budgeting five hundred dollars and and thousand dollars for postage and courier. Any questions? All right. Um, next is economic development. Um, this year, uh, I am budgeting only thousand um, dollars. Any revenue associated with OG incentives is in and out. It's an expense on our side, but revenue uh, as well on our side. So um, just for the cost of advertising, we're budgeting. Um, any questions on economic development? And then um, the la um, second last is drain. So um, every year we apply for drainage um, superintendent grant with OMAFRA. So uh, that revenue that you see is a portion that OMAFRA pays us for um, uh, um, superintendent um, uh, work. And then wages associated with uh, part-time uh, drainage superintendent. Um, and postage and just the regular phone and internet uh, covers uh, um, his cell phone and, and the mileage, occasional mileage. Um, 
So the cost, uh, the budgeted cost for uh, 2024 budget for the drainage department is uh, estimated at $20,450. Any question on drainage? And the last department is debentures. So this is the money that the municipality pays for debentures, but again, uh, receives it back um, during, um, at the, in September when the final tax bill is issued. So it's in and out kind of. And that concludes our 2024 budget. It's a long exercise, but necessary. Anybody have any last questions about that before it carries on? Okay. So we'll go ahead with the recommendation. Not yet. Sorry, Not yet. Sorry. Madam Chair. <laughs> I was going to go, if you flip over to uh, reserve schedule. I just want to quickly go through the reserve schedule so council uh, is aware of where the money is going in and out. So first one, uh, roads, uh, department reserves. So there is uh, that machine time transfer to reserves of $238,500. And then the money is going out of reserves for the purchase of the greater uh, truck and tractor leaving at the end of the year of 2024, a balance of $1.2 million. Um, we, are, uh, we are contributing additional $150,000 for, for the fire truck, which will give us um, um, end of the year balance of 550,000 for the purchase of the new tanker. Um, as I mentioned to you at the beginning of uh, my budget presentation, there is a little bit of money left uh, in Ontario Invest Reserve. So this is this is where um, I, I, that's where I'm proposing to take the money out of reserves for um, this year's initiatives. Uh, tax rate stabilization. Um, we have currently we have two point eight million dollars in that reserve fund. I am proposing taking out um, hundred thousand dollars for um, um, uh, pay equity um, uh, review recommendations and um, a flooding incentive, as well as uh, when we were discussing uh, water budget. Um, water modeling study. Uh, I propose that the water modeling study uh, come out of that reserves. I have to, I just realized that that uh, $46,500 is not included in your schedule. It will be corrected um, uh, for the next council meeting. Um, uh, trailer park, uh, beginning of the year, we have $741,000 uh, with uh, budgeted transfer. We're planning on transferring $98,000 leaving us with a balance of $840,000. Uh, fire communication, this is the second year we're uh, uh, transferring money to reserves. Um, uh, at the end of 2024, we, we're gonna have $60,000. The idea is to um, transfer um, uh, $30,000 um, uh, uh, towards communication reserves. Um, so we have the uh, appropriate amount when um, in three years when um, the cost associated with uh, communication is billed to the municipality. Um, for municipal buildings, uh, that $30,000 is for um, demolishing of the garage in the um uh, old Town Hall building, leaving us with the balance just under uh, 400,000. Marina Bridge, this is um, the third year uh, we are contributing. Uh, we are setting money aside for the replacement of the bridge. Uh, by end of 2024, we should have enough money to replace that bridge. We should have $120,000 in reserves. Um, official plan, as you can see, there is $5,000 left. It will be used this year. 
Um, and then capital 2021-2022. Um, so we are transferring $50,000 for the pool liner and um, uh, taking out, um, well, initially I was, um, I was planning on taking out $40,000 for the master plan that we uh, transferred last year, but that will be changed. Um, fire hall washrooms, $30,000. Um, ceiling re replacement, $25,000. Walker Street reconstruction, $10,000. And uh, just under um, $20,000 for stormwater management and $100,000 for sidewalks. So a lot of money will be used out of that account this year. And prior year capital, that's the account I mentioned to you. Um, several projects, very old account. I am proposing to eliminate that account and use uh, uh, the funds um, towards uh, 2024 budget. There is uh, $40,940.60 left. County roads reserves were estimating uh, $55,829 dollars and 70 cents in surplus that will be transferred to reserves leaving us with the balance of two hundred twenty two thousand one fifty two dollars and fifty three cents and uh, for Rodney library uh, the surplus as well we're transferring to reserves will give us the balance of forty thousand um, dollars um under arena we have been um, setting uh, funds for the dehumidification system when we cleaned the ceiling uh, it was uh, recommended that the uh, dehumidification system be installed to uh, eliminate the mold in the arena so uh, by the end of this year we should have a, a sufficient amount to uh, install that system um, playground equipment, so this is the uh, 20,000 donations that you saw in revenue. Um, it's, you, it, it, it is budgeted as a revenue, but uh, goes out as, in, as a transfer to reserve. So uh, net zero amount. Um, and uh, OCIF funding, so we are receiving $311,000 this year. However, we're uh, budgeting of using half a million dollars towards Rodney uh, sewer refurbishment, leaving us with balance of 698,000. And federal gas tax, uh, we're gonna receive 159,000. Uh, we are uh, allocating $150,000 towards Blacks Road um, uh, construction project. And provincial gas, so that's under transit. We are transferring $5,000 to reserves. Um, Rodney sewage, uh, we are transferring because we're using OCIF funding. This year, we are transferring um, surplus for Rodney sewage reserves of $105,000. So the following year, can they can, the Rodney sewage reserves can contribute. Um, to uh, the refurbishment of the uh, plant. And West Lawrence Sewage, um, we're estimating we will be able to transfer $167,000 to reserves to cover uh, future replacement of that plant. And lastly, um, water reserves, we are taking money out, $258,000, almost $259,000 to cover the cost of uh, capital expenditure, leaving us with the balance of 802,687. Uh, does anybody have any questions? That did not date it. Sorry, oh. the chair. Um, yeah, oh yes, I'm sorry. It did, okay. It did. All right. Yes. So what happened, uh, I, I just discovered it. So water modeling study was, um, taken out of water reserves. It was corrected on my sheet and I will resend um, reserves worksheet again for the next council meeting. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Not seeing any. Thank you for all that and how much time and effort goes into preparing this budget. And 
all the behind the scenes things we don't see. Is council comfortable with the changes that have been proposed uh, to bring revised operating budget to the next council meeting? Yeah, but it seems to be con the consensus. Okay. So bring revised back to the next meeting on the 25th. Just to add to that, though, uh, just because of our public notice uh, bylaw, there's no intent to adopt the bylaw or the budget at the next meeting, or is that the plan? Do we want to see the revised at the next meeting and wait until the first meeting in May to potentially adopt the budget, just because I do have to prepare notices to have that out to the public? Through the chair, um, if I may... Um, I will be bringing capital budget, operating budget, as well as water and sewage back at the next council meeting for final review as well. So are there any um, revisions that council would like to see for water, sewage, or trailer park budget? None that anybody's voicing. Or did we want to just look at it at the next meeting and then adopt it at the one in May? Or what would you like to do? Because she has to give notice. Councillor Denning? Through the chair, I'm certainly fine with that. Um, I think that, uh, of course, it'll come out in the next agenda package. Uh, correct. Through the chair. Um, the, the tricky part is, is timing it with the newspaper because I have to have the notice in um, today. Yes, yeah, so I have already prepared the notices. They have them. It's just a matter of, are we going forward with it? Because if we are not, then I will remove it from the paper. But if we are going forward with it, the nice thing is, is with the notice that I have prepared, it does state in there that counts, that this still serves as notice if council chooses to defer it to another meeting. So if the notice is in next week's paper, Council has the option to adopt the budget at the April 25th meeting or defer it to the first meeting in May. So would council like me to go forward with preparing the notices? Yes, go ahead, prepare okay. the notices. Okay. Okay, that being said. No problem. We're all running up, yeah, I'm at, I think I'm at, 13%. Okay. So when you're ready, did you want to go ahead and read that then, clerk? That West Elgin Council hereby receives the 2024 operating budget presented by M. Badura, CAO Treasurer, for information and discussion purposes and that council directs staff to update the draft budget as discussed and bring back the operating budget draft two at the next regular council meeting, and that council directs staff to prepare the necessary public notices for consideration and potential adoption at the next regular meeting. Move in a seconder for that. Councilor Novakis, Councilor Denning, all in favor? That is so carried. Number eight on our agenda is committee and board reports or updates. We've got Arena Rec. Rodney Park and Economic Development. Any updates at this time? Not seeing any. We'll go ahead to number nine, which is our notice of motion. There's none received. Ten, council inquiries or announcements. Anybody have anything at this time? Councillor Denning? Through the chair, just uh, uh, we had our arena board meeting the other day, um, and it was brought to our attention that uh, West Elgin Skating Club and West Lorne Minor Hockey are both having their uh, year-end um, ceremonies and banquets this weekend. And um, uh, two of my fellow committee members, uh, Councillor Statham and Councillor Loveland, have both offered um, and been invited to go to these ceremonies to bring greetings on behalf of the committee, on behalf of council. So those right. are happening this weekend, uh, uh, hockey on Saturday and skating on Sunday. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right, thank so you for that. Congratulations to both West Lorne. Uh, West Island Skating Club and West Lorne Minor Hockey for fantastic seasons and uh, well done. We appreciate them all, all the volunteers, all the kids, all the parents, everybody. Job well done. Yeah, that's great. They've all been out there working hard and doing a lot, learning lots of skills and bringing, I see the 
Western Home Commons are bringing some more banners to the barn. So, uh, correspondence. There was just the one item uh, that was attached, the municipal taxation announcement for the 2024 budget, a letter presented by, uh, received from Ian Freeman, Assistant Deputy Minister from April 4th, 2024. Anything want to be done on that? Looks like nothing, so go ahead, recommendation. That West Elgin Council hereby receive all correspondence not otherwise dealt with. Mover and seconder, Councillor Novakis, Councillor Denning, all in favor? That's carried. Number 12, items requiring council uh, consideration. So 12.1 is the shuffleboard request from Mr. Judd Kennedy. Thank you. Through the chair, this uh, this um, request was received uh, just a couple days ago at the municipal office. So the, uh, the shuffleboard um, group is going to be hosting the Ontario Shuffleboard Association Tournament. Uh, to be held at the Rodney Recreation Recreation Center on July 23rd and 25th, 2024. So the cost to rent the facility for those full days would be $1,600 plus HST. The, the group is certainly very excited for this. It's going to bring quite a few um, people to West Elgin, uh, which certainly will, you know, uh, allow visitors to our restaurants, our stores, everything, um, everything like that. So they have requested the, the full fee waiver. Um, but of course, if, um, if council has other options, if they wanted to waive a certain portion of that or, um, or not at all, that is entirely up to council to do so. All right, thank you for that information in our package and orally as well. Um, discussion for council, what are you looking for? What options are you looking to uh, present for that day? It is quite exciting that they're going to have something in our area, but what are you looking at? Mm -hmm. Councilor Vakas? Uh, through the chair, I don't, it, this is a tough one. I He didn't really say in his letter whether or not they're taking fees. I would be hopeful that people would go out to the community, but it does sound like the Kiwanis is going to be in-house and knowing the age of shuffle borders, I just am wary about making this into a huge economic impact if they don't actually leave the building, if they stay in the building the whole time. I think the one thing that I'm also concerned about is how much staff time is going to be needed for those three days on the weekend. Um, and I tried to find where they were last time to see if I could reach out to the community to see the impact. $1,600 is a huge amount. This is not for any specific group. It's for a group outside of us. So that was just my thought. Okay. Anybody else on council have any thoughts or comments? Councilor Denning? Through the chairs. Thank you. So, uh, I was the one who uh, originally received this letter from Mr. Kennedy and then and forwarded it to our clerk. Um, he had made the, the point that there would be people staying out at the trailer park that weekend. Um, but I suppose we don't have any metrics. You're absolutely right about that. Um, but if the city of London was to host the Labatt Briar, I'm guessing they would do their due diligence to find out what the economic impact would be, or perhaps they don't know until they've hosted the first one. Uh, this is a unique situation. And um, certainly I would say that we want to be uh, viewed as being a, a welcome uh, municipality to these sorts of unique events. Um, setting precedent is something we need to be aware of, of course, but at the very least, I think it would be worth us um, offering some sort of gesture of our appreciation of the work that's gone into inviting an, a provincial group to come to our community for an event. So um, my thought is that uh, we would uh, look at option two as um, as a consideration so, uh, and, and finding a, a, a cost to waive somewhere between all of it and nothing. Um, as a gesture of our appreciation for the work that's being done, but also recognizing, as Councillor Novak has said, that there's going to be staff time involved here. Thank you for that, Councillor Jenning. Councillor Novak through the chair, and like the Briar is a great one. It, Budweiser makes money. They, it's not that this is done for free, and it's being done in uh, municipally. Like I just, 
I don't know many places, even in London, if they were hosting them and there is economic impact, that there would be no fee. So I agree. It's finding the kind of in between one, I guess it's a learning lesson. I guess the other thing, and, and we, you would know best, it's that we are inviting a whole bunch of people into the rec center and on our floor. And are we going to have to paint sooner? Like, I know that we have the rental fees there. It's just, my concern is, is it's not the full cost of what a three-day event in our rec center could be is all captured in the $1,600. Mm -hmm. So I'd propose we um, wave half or a little or a little over that they would pay. So not sure anybody else thinks about that. Not knowing, as Councilor Vacas has said, what uh, impact would have in a community? Um, what it would, uh, if they're bringing fees, anything like that. There's not really a lot of information. I don't know what that would be for our municipality, though. Councilor Denning? Through the chair. So that that is something that I think is reasonable with the caveat that this is um, to be understood that this is a one-time thing uh, because this is the first time. And that um, regular fees may or will apply for future events because uh, we have other events that happen there, uh, the gun show, for example, um, and we have to, you know, approach this all with fairness. So if we are reducing this fee for this event, this is, you know, a unique situation that we may get asked to do again. So I think we just need to be very careful about how we word this. And if somebody was coming to us with the idea of another annual event um, in an effort to encourage that, perhaps we do mm -hmm. this again. We, we we find that that sweet spot, but with the understanding that once this event is established and they want to come back, that this these are our fees and this is what it is. So we would charge him the $1,000 plus tax with a discount of 600 or what we're looking at? Councilor Navakis? Through the chair, I think that would work for me. I'd also think that maybe the economic development committees were not putting time on staff could do a follow-up with local businesses on say the 26th or 27th to see if they actually see the impact. Okay. Anybody agreeable to that amount or? Okay. Uh, go ahead, the recommendation when you're done writing. That West Elgin Council hereby received the request dated April 9th, 2024 from Mr. Jed Kennedy regarding the Ontario Shuffleboard Association Tournament to be held on July 23rd to 25th, 2024 at the Rodney Recreation Center and that Council approve a total rental amount of $1,000 plus HST. And we were in a seconder, please. Councilor Vacas, Councilor Statham, all in favor? That is so moved. Go ahead to our other um, items requiring council consideration. 12.2, uh, the West Lauren Optimist Club request memorial bench. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this was a request that was received uh, both between uh, myself and Mr. Gosnell that um, the West Lauren Optimist Club is looking to put a memorial bench um, in honor of the late uh, Mayor Duncan McPhail. And they had initially... Um, discuss some different locations which was attached to the report uh so certainly if council they're fully open to suggestions though if council would like it at a different location um the idea of the park i believe was initially discussed but also uh, decided not to just because of the possible uh, new park going in there and some of the rena uh, work that will be done there um so Mrs. McPhail had mentioned Uptown uh, by the ice cream shop or Margs Variety, uh, but certainly if council has other options, they are open to that. Um, so options being that council, of course, um, is directing staff to work with the West Lauren Optimist Club to determine a best suitable location or if council has a specific request for this memorial bench. It's a great idea. Lovely, lovely gesture and everything. In my mind, it's between the McPhail family and the optimists, where would they like it? So, um, Councilor Steele? 
mm-hmm. through the chair. I was just, I would echo that. I would say uh, I would go with option one and allow uh, the Optimist Club and uh, <clears throat> the McPhail family to decide where they want to put it and work with staff to do so. So, Councillor Denny? Through the chair, if, if, if I may provide my unique perspective, because I look across the road every day and see this area of Rodney, uh, and, I, and I just offer this uh, for, for staff to to uh, forward as, as considerations as this is being navigated. Uh, there is an existing bench right in front of the Rodney Library that has a divider in the middle. On the one side, the memorial bench says Babe Oliver, which is Roxanne Nethercott's mom. On the other side is blank. And that's always kind of bothered me that there was one plaque there and nothing on that side. So perhaps a consideration is applying a plaque to an existing bench. And the other option to consider is there is another bench sitting further to the south in front of what was Ron's variety store that's sitting empty um, mm-hmm. that um, is further away from, from the uh, ice cream parlor but or Mark's variety. But that is another bench that is sitting there not that has not been memorialized yet. So thinking about some of our existing inventory, um, if staff feels that we are uh, sufficiently um, supplied with benches in the downtown of Rodney, perhaps using some of our existing stuff might be a consideration. And I just, I shall leave that with you. Okay. Thank you for that. Any other thoughts? Um, so it looks like we're going ahead with uh, option was it option one. Yeah. We'll go ahead with that when you're ready. That West Elgin Council hereby approve the request received April 9th, 2024 from the West Lorne Optimist Club to install a memorial bench to honour the late Mayor Duncan McPhail, and that Council hereby approve the installation cost to be extent, ex- expensed <laughs> to the municipality, and that Council direct staff to work with the West Lorne Optimist Club and the McPhail family to determine a location best suitable for the memorial bench. A move and a seconder, please. Councillor Vacas, Councillor Denning, all in favour? That is so carried. Moving on to 13, our bylaws, 13.1, uh, bylaw 20, 24-27, site plan agreement, uh, 12450 Furnival Road. That bylaw 2024-27 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a site plan agreement with V&V Holdings, Inc., 12450 Furnival Road, be read a first, second, third, and final time. Mover, please. Councillor Denning, seconder, Councillor Novakis, all in favor? That is carried. 12.3, bylaw 2024-28, provisional bylaw, Sherman Drain. That bylaw 2024-28, being a bylaw to provide for drainage works on the Sherman Drain in the municipality of West Elgin, be read a first and second time. Mover, please. Councillor Novakis, seconder. Councillor Statham, all in favor? That is so carried. Uh, number 14, our agenda is upcoming meetings and events. They're listed there for you. If there's any to add, just let us know. And number 15, we'll be going into closed session. That the Council of the Municipality of West Elgin hereby proceeds into closed session at 8.30 p.m. to discuss matters pursuant to Section 239.2c, being a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. I move and second are going to go into closed session. Councillor Vacas, Councillor Statham, all in favor? And that is carried. Number 16 of our agenda is report from closed session. Reporting from closed at 8.46 p.m. that council received one item pursuant to section 239.2c of the Municipal Act, being a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board and provided staff with administrative direction. Thank you for that. I don't need a mover, or second or no. So uh, 17 on our agenda confirming bylaw. That bylaw 2024-29 being a bylaw to confirm the proceeding of the regular meeting of council held on April 11th, 2024, be read a first, second, third, and final time. A mover, please. Councillor Statham and second or Councillor Vacas. All in favor? It's carried. Number 18's adjournment. That the Council of the Municipality of West Elgin hereby adjourn at 8.47 p.m. to meet again at 4 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, April 25th, 2024, or at the call of the chair. And a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Novakis and Councillor Statham, all in favor? That's carried.